Opening day at the ballpark as the 2023 college baseball season begins and the road to Omaha begins across the country. Here today we start a three-game series as the Western Michigan Broncos fly down from Kalamazoo to face your number one ranked Fighting Tigers of LSU. Hello, everybody. This is Chris Blair, along with Tiger champion Doug Thompson, our straw stirring the drink back in the Capital One studios, Miss Alondra Villarreal, welcoming you to Skip Bertman Field inside Alec Box Stadium here on the campus of LSU in Baton Rouge for today's play-by-play -play story. Well, after a trip to the NCAA Regionals in year number one, second-year head coach Jay Johnson has been relentless in his pursuit of making the Tigers stronger, putting together some new assistant coaches, bringing in some new young talent and proven veterans from around the country. The results, well, in the preseason, they've been a unanimous number one. The expectations are always high here at LSU this time of year, and when he was hired in June of 2021, coach said that's why he's here. They'll go up against the Broncos team that last year struggled through an 18 and 36 season. Though Western Michigan appears to be excited to start the season here in Baton Rouge. Many players earlier this week referring to the box as the holy grail of college baseball. Not to mention, while it is a little chilly here in South Louisiana, high temperature today in Kalamazoo is 25. And with the wind chill, it makes it feel like it's 14. I'd say they are thrilled to be here. Some familiar faces in the purple and gold for 2023. Some new names we will soon learn. But once again, the destination remains the same. Omaha. So find your favorite chair, grab your favorite beverage, a statewide holiday. It's opening day at the box. It's Western Michigan. It's LSU, and it's coming up next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Alec Box Stadium, Skip Field, the 2023 season opener, LSU versus Western Michigan. It's time now for Talking with Tigers. We're joined by LSU junior pitcher Ty Floyd, a veteran leader of his pitching staff. And Ty, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Here it is, the season opener for 2023. Just tell us about the excitement level right now for the team. Yeah, I mean, everybody's super excited. I think, uh, I know the game got moved back a little bit, but I think everybody was still super excited to start the season. It's going to be a cold night, but we hope everybody comes out and supports the Tigers tonight. So this is your third year here, Ty. As I said, you're a veteran leader on the pitching staff. Uh, just talk about uh, the development of the staff beginning back in the fall. New pitching coach, Wes Johnson. Talk about your relationship with Wes and how he has helped you guys develop. Yeah, me and Coach uh, Wes Johnson were pretty close, I would like to say. He's helped me tremendously, not only me, but everybody else on the staff. I think the, uh, the results speak for themselves. I think everybody in the fall has had tremendous uh, great ways to go up, and they've been going up ever since that day he came here. But uh, looking forward to it, and I can't wait to see him keep, keep coaching us this year. 
Talk about these uh, hitters on your club tie. I mean, you guys have faced them now for gosh knows how many scrimmages since uh, since September, uh, all the way through the preseason here this month. Uh, talk about facing the hitters and what kind of challenges will they present for opposing pitchers? Yeah, so I believe I faced them. Sure, I can imagine. I faced them three years. It yeah. seems like, but uh, <laughs> they're uh, they're very hard to face. But it's fun to face them because you know, whenever you start the real season stuff, it's a lot easier to face other guys because you realize how good of hitters you have in your on your team. So it's a lot easier to go out there and pitch for, against other people. But uh, we have some pretty cool bats that can hit the ball a long way and hit it very very hard. <laughs> You know, earlier this week, uh, Trey Morgan uh, attended one of our media sessions, and he was asked about who some of the toughest pitchers he's faced, and he mentioned you, and he said, you know, of course, you, your fastball, as we know, is electric, but he also brought up your, your breaking pitch and your changeup as just being devastating. Just talk about your development in those areas. Yeah, I would. Um, Coach West just really harped on me about throwing my uh, changeup and my curveball a lot, especially my slider this year, but uh, he's really harped on me throwing it as much as I can in the fall inner squads and fall scrimmages and stuff. But by doing that, it's made me more comfortable with those pitches, and it's going to allow me to throw it for a lot of strikes whenever the season starts today. Finally, uh, Ty, just your thoughts on, on today's starting pitcher, Paul Skeens. Of course, uh, Paul, a transfer from the Air Force Academy, uh, has a big arm, as we all know. Just your thoughts on what you've observed about him uh, leading up to this uh, first game of the season. Yeah, Paul came in this year, and uh, you would never tell he's a new guy. He came in as a leader, and he showed that – He's a good leader to show the, guy, the younger guys how he goes about himself and the routine he has and stuff. And I'm super excited to see him pitch today, and I know he's going to do really well. All right, Ty, we appreciate it. Uh, good luck today and throughout the weekend, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Go Tigers. All right, Ty Floyd with us, talking with Tigers. Back with a lot more after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! to take a trip around the SEC on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back in on a chilly and windy day here in the capital city. Back into the Cajun Country Rice on Deck show. Remember rice from Louisiana Farms to your table. Again, opening day for college baseball, the SEC. They get cranked up here in 2023. And we get cranked up here on the LSU Sports Radio Network for the first time this season. That means to my left, LSU Tiger champion Doug Thompson and Doug time to present uh, around the SEC from visit Baton Rouge we're ready are you how about the games got even ahead of us here on opening day yeah they've already started without us I don't know why they would do that but all 14 teams around the league are indeed underway 
after tonight. Missouri already taking the first loss of the season for the conference. They lose 5-3 to three earlier today. They're in Arlington, Texas. They played against Oklahoma State in the college baseball showdown. Jacksonville State in Georgia also underway. They're in Athens this weekend. That game started right around 2 o'clock, and the Bulldogs right now trail that one by a score of 4 to nothing. Richmond will be at Alabama later this afternoon starting at 3 o'clock. Kentucky will be at Elon, Western Michigan, of course, here at the box. Virginia Military Institute will be at Mississippi State. They again start at 3 o'clock, also starting at 3. UMass Lowell will play against South Carolina at and that one is at South Carolina. Vanderbilt will be at TCU. Actually, not at TCU. They're in Arlington as well at that college baseball showdown. That's going to be a great matchup. The number six Vanderbilt Commodores against 14 TCU. Indiana will be at Auburn on the Plains. They start at 4 o'clock. Delaware will be in Oxford to face the defending national champions, Ole Miss Rebels. Charleston Southern will be at Florida. That game starts at 6 o'clock. Also at 6 o'clock, Seattle will be in at Texas A&M at College Station tonight. Arkansas will do battle against Texas at 7 o'clock. That one's in Arlington as well in that same showdown. And then finally, Chris, number two, Tennessee and Arizona will do battle starting at 7 p.m. tonight in the MLB Desert Invitational in Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you, Doug. Around the SEC, once again, presented by Visit Baton Rouge. We're ready. Are you, Doug? Great to have you back in the booth for another season. Looking forward to what may be one of the more exciting ones in some time as we get started here today. Oh, it's great to be back, Chris. Blessed with another year. I was so excited this morning. Try to get an uh, extra belt loop on the old belt. Didn't work out, but that's how excited I was this morning <laughs> and how optimistic I am about this season. I'm excited to watch this Tiger Ball Club with all of the preseason accolades and all the hype that we've heard. It's finally great to be here in our favorite seat in Baton Rouge to watch the Tigers play. No doubt about it. We're going to find out in a little over 15 minutes. First pitch going to come your way, Western Michigan and your Fighting Tigers. A reminder, Our Lady of the Lake, proud to be the championship health partner of LSU. Together, Our Lady of the Lake and LSU, well, they're champions for Louisiana. Together, we roar. Learn more at OLOLRMC.com slash LSU. Up next, well, we'll take a look at the starting pitchers in game number one. Doug will break them down when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. If you want to see the world's largest chest of drawers, With more on the Cajun Country Rice on deck show. Time to break down the game's starting pitchers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back inside the booth here, high above Skip Bergman Field, Alec Box Stadium. Fans have the right equipment to take on any job linked to the land. Just visit Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana at SunEquip. Dot com. Starting pitchers today, Brady Miller going for the Broncos. It's Paul Skeens making his way from the Air Force Academy right here to LSU. He'll start the season for the Tigers. Doug Thompson, what kind of pitching matchup do we expect here on opening day? Well, it's a couple of right-handers. We'll start out with Brady Miller. He's a redshirt junior, 6'4", 205 pounds. He was actually injured the entire 2022 season. There's some rumors out there that his fastball is actually 
improved a little bit since coming back from his injury. The scouting report says he'll sit 88 to 91 with that fastball. He throws a slider in the high 70s and a changeup at that same speed in the high 70s. And he will go against tonight, Paul Skeens. Chris, we've had a lot of debuts over the last eight years in front of us, but I got to tell you, this debut of Paul Skeens is one of the ones I've been looking forward to the most. He's six foot six. Two, close to 250 pounds. He has been a nightmare against the LSU hitters throughout the fall. Literally no one has had much success. That fastball is going to be in the high 90s with an overhand curveball and a great changeup. I am very excited to watch Paul Skeens tow the mound for the rubber. He reminds me of the guy sitting right next to us in the booth, Ben McDonald. He has that type of stuff, that type of stature to maybe be one of the best of all time. It was interesting this week. Trey Morgan was asked, do you remember facing Paul Skeens in 2021 when Air Force was here? And he goes, oh, yeah, first two pitches I didn't see. That's how much respect <laughs> well, he there has you go. for his starting pitcher this afternoon. That's a look at the starting pitchers again for the Broncos. It's Brady Miller, a junior right-hander, and Paul Skeens making his debut as a Tiger, the junior right-hander. We'll tow the rubber for Jay Johnson. We'll continue with more. Had a chance to visit. Speaking of, Coach Jay Johnson will hear from the coach later starting lineups and then it's first pitch. Western Michigan and your Tigers here at the box on opening day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. This is Richard. Yeah, it's definitely time. Uh, long off season, ready to go. Let's line it up and play. I know one of the things that uh, you talked about a lot last year was implementing the foundation, daily habits, winning habits, and how that will carry over not only through a given year, but year after year. Going back to fall ball preseason leading up to today, guys really starting to buy into what you guys set in stone last year? Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, the extension of that is just the uh, player leadership has taken a real step forward obviously no everyone knows how talented dylan cruz is but what we see is the work ethic the character the type of teammate he is and he's also found his voice you know as a leader 
in the locker room, clubhouse, dugout, whatever you want to call it. And guys, definitely follow him. You know, adding Paul Skeens, our starting pitcher today from the Air Force Academy, is just he's an exceptional pitcher, you know, maybe the best in the country, but he's a phenomenal human being. And so when you have two talented players like that that are as put together as they are, uh, guys follow them. And so it's been a good start with the uh, player leadership. I know I joked a lot to Tiger fans in the offseason and leading up to today about one of the big challenges is going to be all the talent on this team. How do you manage the roster? Obviously, starting opening day, starting lineup, not going to be in stone. But how much and how close to opening day did you have to go through you and the staff and decide, hey, this will be best for opening day? Yeah, it's been a a lot of notebooks have been burned through, writing out uh, lineups, game scenarios, all that type of stuff. We look at everything, and in this uh, team, there was some where there's no wrong answer in some respects. Uh, We like where we're set as far as defense, offense, solid hitting skills, uh, speed, power, all of those types of things. But there's a couple guys on the bench that, I mean, if I had to – have them in there to win a game we had to win they would be in there too so um it'll take shape as we go i think there's a lot of guys that can make a valuable contribution either at the beginning of the game middle of the game end of the game and i'm excited to use our team that way i know a couple of weeks ago you announced paul Skeens, who you just talked about would be the starting pitcher on opening day earlier this week you talked about the weekend starting rotation for those who maybe haven't had a chance to get out here and see Skeens uh, describe the type of pitcher he is, what we can expect to see today, and what you want to see. Yeah, I want to see uh, strikes, which that's his M.O. with all three pitches. I mean, it's an electric fastball up to 99. Um, His slider is a wipeout pitch now. Him and Wes Johnson have worked really hard to develop that. It's a plus changeup. I think it's a guy that is a true ace, which I'm excited about, and um, somebody we're going to lean on hopefully to make 18, 19, 20 starts. And um, he's he's the real deal, uh, complete package. And then just the poise, the character, the toughness, all those things are in place. And so now you have a talent and you have the right person with that talent. So we expect great things from him. With Paul and some of the other starting pitchers you'll have this season, I remember last year before games, you were talking about how this is the plan for this game. Let's get four. Let's get five. Again, with a guy that may be able to go the distance, does it allow you a little more flexibility into the pitching, uh, the the style and management of a particular game? For sure. I think he's definitely a guy that can get through the lineup two or three times. Um, we have him settled at about 90 pitches would be the max for today. Um, this early in the season, um, hopefully we have a long road ahead of us. So you got to be smart about those types of things. More options out of the bullpen um so i think you're gonna see guys arms stay fresher and i think having guys that can get through the lineup two times get us into that fifth inning sixth inning seventh inning uh is just gonna be a tremendous help to the bullpen and how the how effective we are as a pitching staff last thing coach western michigan comes down i know reading uh, their players their coaches talked about this is the opportunity they look for they called i think one player called it the holy grail of college baseball to play here at the box what do we know about the broncos what can we expect today and what can we see this weekend yeah i think uh, veteran lineup guys that have had a lot of college at bats um, I don't think they'll be overwhelmed or anything like that. It's a ton of experience, uh, well coached. Uh, they have some pitchers that are back that missed last year with some injuries, including Brady Miller, who we'll see today. So I think they're excited about their team, and um, we're happy to have them here and want to get this uh, season started on the right foot. Coach, I don't want to keep you anymore. I always appreciate your time, but excited to be here with you, excited for opening day. Go get them. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Head Coach Jay Johnson, everybody. We'll take a timeout. We come back. It's the starting lineups and then first pitch of 2023 coming your way. Western Michigan taking on your Tigers here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! It's 4 a.m., Monday, and you're literally sucking baby snot through a tube because she's congested. Man, that's love. And if you love her that much, love her enough to make sure she's buckled in the right car seat. To make sure your child's in the right seat for their age and size, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Going to the track, the wall, see ya! Tiger fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! My husband had a a gun. Him and his friends would go shooting. The ammunition, unfortunately, was not stored separately. In a million years, we never thought that Emily could. There's a hole in our family that can never, ever be filled. 63 Americans a day die by gun suicide. With safe gun storage, we can give our loved ones a second chance in life. Learn more at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by Brady and the Ad Council. First pitch of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball is just moments away. Time now for the starting lineups. Presented by Cintas. Proudly helping Louisiana business stay clean, safe, and ready for the workday for over 40 years. On the LSU Sports Radio Network. Today's opening game of 2023 brought to you by the seven partners that represent Team LSU. Cox, McDonald's, Our Lady of the Lake, Albertsons, Coca-Cola, People's Health, and Hancock Whitney. Time now for the Cintas starting lineup. First for Western Michigan making their way down from Kalamazoo. Obviously, they feel warm today in uh, 40 degree temperatures compared to 20 or below. Getting things started for Coach Gernon will be the center fielder wearing number two, Will Morrison. A right-handed junior batting second will be the shortstop, Jimmy Allen, wearing number 11. Number 12, Gavin Doyle, will be at third base and bat third. Cade Sullivan, the first baseman, wearing number 36, will bat cleanup for the Broncos. Dylan Nevar will be in right field. He'll bat fifth, wearing number 15. Greg Budig will be the catcher behind the plate. He'll bat sixth in the lineup, wearing number 27. Josh Swinehart will be in left field for the Broncos, wearing number 20, batting seventh. Bobby Deering will be the DH in the eighth spot. And uh, the second baseman rounds out the bottom of the order with Brandon Herity wearing number 13 in uh, Herity rounding out the lineup. Again, Brady Miller, the right-hander, a junior for the Broncos, will take the mound. Now for your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Second-year head coach Jay Johnson will send out Paxton Kleen to lead it off. The right fielder wearing number 28, the freshman getting the start here on opening day. Braden Jobert will be in left field wearing number 6 and batting second. Dylan Cruz will be in center field batting third. Tommy White at third base will bat cleanup, wearing number 47 in the purple and gold. Trey Morgan will bat fifth, he'll be at first base. Jared Jones, a freshman, will be the DH on opening day, wearing number 22. Brady Neal, freshman, gets the start behind the dish. He'll catch and bat seventh. Jordan Thompson will be at shortstop batting eighth. And Ben Nipple, the junior second baseman, will bat ninth for Coach Johnson. Paul Skeens, again, the junior right-hander, will start the season on the bump for the Tigers. That's a look at the Centos starting lineup. That means we take a quick break and come back. First pitch of 2023 comes your way. Western Michigan and LSU at the box on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, two of Louisiana's premier institutions, combining efforts like never before. Together, we're tackling challenges from research to student health and cancer to cardiovascular care. Together, we're training top-tier athletes and the next generation of healthcare professionals. Together, we're creating lasting change, building a healthier, stronger Tiger family. Our Lady of the Lake and LSU, together we roar. Hi, I'm Kevin Falk, LSU Hall of Famer. My years at LSU were amazing. I've always loved celebrating with my teammates, especially when someone was serving up some delicious Manda salsa. For a lot of Tiger fans, it's just not game day without Manda in the mix. Serving top quality sauces and original season is Manda's strong side. But it's not Manda's flavor that's always got me running back for more. You get it? Running back for more. After 75 years, the flavor still says it all. Manda Fine Meats, the official smoke sauce of LSU Athletics. You want a carnival groove with a rhyme on top for 2023? We're going to let a new beat drop. Yum, drum, drum, drum. That's what I'm talking about. Mastery money. L.A. Lottery in the house. Lottery search for carnival season. Play Mambo Mambo. Went up to $2,000. 
$2,000. And masquerade money, you can win up to $12,000. So many ways to win, I'm gonna play them again. You gotta be 21 to purchase. 17 SEC Championships. The flash five R's in the pitch. 34 NCAA tournament appearances. One on the hit the right. Team trips to Omaha. Six national titles. The powerhouse of college baseball. This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. On the LSU Sports Radio Network. Just moments away from the start of the 2023 season here at Alec Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field. And as we get set for game number one, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball, the LSU Sports Radio Network, and streaming on the LSU Sports mobile app. Sunshine, but chilly on this Friday afternoon. Game time moved up from 6.30 to 3 o'clock to get the season started as LSU hosts Western Michigan in a three-game set here from Baton Rouge. Along with our producer in the Capital One studio, Ms. Alondra Villarreal, along with former Tiger champion Doug Thompson, I'm Chris Blair. We are happy to have you join us wherever you are on this Friday afternoon, headed into a Mardi Gras weekend, Mardi Gras week. And, of course, the start of college baseball. Enough of excitement to go around for everybody, Doug Thompson. And before we get this season started, you were a member of some pretty good teams here at LSU. There are a number of great teams in the annals of college baseball. Many people talking about this year's roster for Jay Johnson. We could probably debate pound for pound, talent for talent teams here at LSU in the past. But one thing is different. The way social media, the way media is consumed, this may be one of the most hyped teams coming into a season in quite a long, long time. Um, it's very reminiscent of the late 90s teams that I was a part of. Uh, the, you know, the preseason hype. Everywhere you go, it seems like somebody's talking about the Tigers, which is great for the program. And on paper, as you mentioned, Chris, it doesn't get much stronger. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's play ball. So leading things off, it'll be Will Morrison, the center fielder for the Broncos. He'll stand in, the right-hander awaits, and there's a fastball for a strike. We are underway. Game time, 3.06 Central time, and the 2023 season is underway. It's 0-1 to Morrison. How about that 99-mile-an-hour fastball to start off the season? Just getting warmed up. Here's one that misses low. Did he hang back? They'll say he did. He was able to hold the swing, and Morrison, that'll even the count one and one as that one dropped in low. I would not want to be Will Morrison right now. Wind blowing in the face. The guy out there throwing 100 miles an hour. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on and fouled. Hit the plate. Dribbles down the third base line, but they're going to say it's a fair ball behind the plate. Home plate umpire Eddie Newsom let it play out. Picked up. Down the third baseline, great job by Brady Neal to stay with the play. He didn't hear stop the action from the umpire, so he picked it up barehanded, throws to first to Morgan in time, and Morrison is retired. That ball traveled all of three feet, a full swinging bunt, just stopped on the line. Great job there by Brady Neal of bouncing out of there really quick and grabbing it off the line in time. That'll bring to the plate Jimmy Allen, the shortstop, another right-hander to face Skeens, and there's one across for a strike. It's 0-1. Yeah, that's four consecutive fastballs at 99 miles an hour plus. Again, as Doug told you, wind blowing in right into the faces of the hitters here at the box. Flags fully unfurled out at the batter's eye. The 0-1 off speed. Wow. Covers the plate. It's 0-2. Nice change of pace there for Skeens, and he's ahead in the count. Yeah, that slider broke from the right-handed batter's box to the outside corner. Here's the 0-2 with one down. The pitch, swing, got him to chase that one a little outside, and Allen down on strike. So now two retired to start the top of the first inning. Well, welcome to Baton Rouge, Paul Skeens. <laughs> As advertised up to this point. I don't think I've ever seen four straight fastballs at 99 miles an hour. 
Batting third in the order, Gavin Doyle, another right-hander. Off speed, and that one will catch the inside part of the plate, and it's 0-1, 85 on that breaker. Yeah, Gavin Doyle, actually the leading returning hitter. He hit 343 a year ago. This one will miss low, goes back to the fastball. Evens it up now, one ball, one strike. That was only 98 miles an hour. Skeens working quickly on the mound here to open this game. First pitch or next pitch. Just missed. Tried to get him to chase it and just missed the corner with that breaking ball. It's now two and one. Skeens, of course, advertised after he transferred here as the Otani of college baseball. Batted 315 a year ago at Air Force as this one again just missing the corner. Comes back with the heat at 97. Now three and one the count. Yeah, he actually won the John Olerud Award last year, which is given to college baseball's best two-way player. 3-1. Misses inside. He'll give up the walk, and the Broncos get a runner aboard here with two down in the top of the first inning. It begs the question. I've heard a lot of the former players. I've heard Skip be asked about it. Jay's been asked about it. You've got a guy who's your Friday night guy. Yeah. Certainly, as you said during the scouting report, he's got all the tools to be an elite SEC pitcher. Do you take the chance of ever having him step to the plate, although he's talented there? Why take that risk? We'll see as the season unfolds. Runner at first. Here's a fastball at the belt called strike to Kate Sullivan. Batting cleanup, the first baseman for the Broncos, and it's 0-1. Last John, Coach Johnson last week, that exact question. and This guy would hit 25 home runs this year if he were to play every day, and that was Coach Johnson's opinion. But He's, he's proven to me now why Coach Johnson said he's too valuable to put out there on the mound. That fastball misses just off the plate at 98 miles an hour to make it one and one. But he doesn't want to risk the swing where the ball comes off the fingers and you lose this on the mound for a couple of weeks. And now I'm kind of seeing what he was talking about. Two outs, runner on. Top of the first inning, no score. Here's the 1-1 one, one in that one. At the knees, called strike with a heater. It's one and two. You know, Ben McDonald and I were discussing it, and he said, you know, last year, Skeens on this team, where you were struggling to find offense at times and needed clutch hitters in certain situations, maybe you roll the dice last year. Yeah, maybe so. But because you got guys who can probably deliver that are sitting in the dugout, you don't take the risk. This one poked high in the air, but shallow left field. Joe Bear went back. Now have to come running in. He'll make the grab and tie for out number three. So the Broncos are done, and the season is underway. They get no runs, no hits. They leave one man on board. We go to the bottom of the first. Tigers come to the plate for the first time this year when we come back. Scoreless here at the box on the LSU Sports Radio Network. He's going to the track, the wall. Fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and experiences connect through conversation, and it feels good. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together. Start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Head to the bottom of the first inning. No score here at the box. Paul Skeens makes his debut. And, uh, Doug, I don't know that I have to twist your arm or really debate much with you. I think uh, 
looked pretty much Man. what we were told was going to be, and he looked good in that top of the yeah, first. I'm kind of blown away. A bunch of 99-mile-an-hour fastballs. The lowest, I think, was 97. And I'm torn between which is the better of the, the two pitches we've seen. His fastball or his slider. His slider looks like it's got about a foot of break on it. Wow. Come into the 2023 season, of course, the motto for LSU, team theme, if you will, the powerhouse of college baseball. Again, Doug, it's interesting. A lot of people forget LSU was second behind Tennessee in total offense last year. And, again, they've got the big guns from last season added with some more from the transfer portal and the freshman class. As speaking of, Paxton Kling will lead it off for the Tigers in the second offering from Miller going to catch him on the rib cage, And Kling will make his debut, hit by pitch, and he will head down to first. My point being, last year we all knew the top-heavy lineup LSU had. Teams were really able to take control of the bottom half of that order. A little different this year when you look at this lineup. And up next with a runner on nobody out will be Braden Jobear. He's one of those swinging sticks from a year ago. Yeah, he swung it all right. 18 home runs last year for Braden Jobear. First delivery inside, hits the mitt, but gets away slightly from Budig. He'll track it down, and Kling stays put at first base. So it's 1-0 to Jobear. And that was four less than Dylan Cruz hit. He had 22 last year, but Jobear did it with about 50 less at-bats. The 1 0. Misses a little high. Braden holds back with a bat, and it's now two balls, no strikes. Well, the other thing about this, again, playing off the powerhouse of college baseball, plays a couple of ways, obviously, with the six national championships won by LSU. This one going to miss to Joe Bear, now make it three balls, no strikes. The fact that LSU, really, for the most part, Skip Burtman credited for. The giant rise in popularity and the game as we know it today. But also with the way these guys were able to swing the bats in the fall and preseason. There's a strike at the letters on the inside corner with a 90 mile an hour fastball from Miller, make it three and one. But you're going to be able to protect the Dylan Cruises of the world, even the Tommy Whites of the world, just based on the lineup that you can construct if you're Jay Johnson, as time called by Eddie Newsom, our home plate umpire, momentarily. Yeah, like if you don't pitch to Cruz today, you got to pitch to Joe Bear, who's in a 3 1 count right now, by the way. Again, and there then, seems uh, to be a conversation. I think we're just about set for play. If you want to pitch careful to Joe Bear and Cruz, Tommy White <laughs> would be next, and then Trey Morgan. 3 1. Well, they said it was a 3-2 count. That's what the home plate umpire was trying to get the scoreboard right. Jay Johnson had stepped out. He wanted clarification. However, Eddie Newsom really didn't notify those in the press box. Typically, they will turn around and give you what the count is. And, in fact, it was 3-2. and two, And on the inside corner called strike, Joe Bear down on strikes and one down. And we will see the aforementioned Dylan Cruz. Well, that doesn't match up with the total pitches on the board. I, again, I didn't see it either, Four and I think Jay Johnson. Seven total pitches, and Kling had two of them, so there should at least be nine total pitches in the game. Kling over at first, by the way, hit by that pitch as I Miller. 3 that's, that's I don't weird. remember missing a strike. I miss things from time to time. But it's first game of the season, Doug. First inning, I think I, I think I was on top of things. Cruz stands in. This one misses high, and it's 1-0. Dylan Cruz, again, a phenomenal 2022 season, which led to even more expectation from the rest of the college world here in 2023 as he takes a swing with this one high and out of play down the line and right evens the count, one ball and one strike. Cruz, second leading hitter last year, batted 349. Again, as Doug told you, 22 home runs on the season, 73 runs scored, 72 runs batted in, made spectacular plays in the field at center. He does it all. The 1-1 hit in the air to left center field. Morris and the center fielder coming in. The left fielder, Swinehart, neither can get to it. Just drops in front of him in shallow left center. And Dylan Cruz, first at bat, is a base hit. One out, runners first and second for LSU. And we see that launch headed to the left center gap. It looked like Swinehart knew exactly who was hitting the ball. He took a step or two back, but that ball only landed, let's say, 40 feet behind the out or the infield dirt that wind today is going to play havoc with fly balls 
So now Kling will take a lead off second. Tigers have their first man in scoring position on the year. No score, bottom of the first inning. But the Tigers threatening as Tommy White steps to the plate. Wide stance for the right-hander. First pitch, jumps on, base hit into center field. Kling around third, he'll head for home. Cruz into third base. And it's a 1-0 LSU lead with an RBI single for Tommy White. Runners on the corner, still just one out. Way to get the old LSU career started off, Mr. White. Nothing better than a knock and a single to put the Tigers ahead one to nothing. Again, White, an incredible freshman campaign. 27 home runs for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. A big part of the reason they were able to make a little run in the NCAA tournament. But he was a very early transfer, transfer portal commitment to LSU and fan base and Thought I even saw Jay Johnson get pretty excited about it because he certainly got a great career ahead of him here at LSU. We'll see Trey Morgan. Speaking of great careers, breaking ball from Miller floats in too far inside, and it's 1-0 to Morgan, who last year finished up the year batting 324. The left-handed first baseman has runners first and third. Just one out here in the bottom of the first. The 1-0. Big swing lifted in the air to left. Swinehart, a couple of steps back. Now the wind carries it in. He'll have to run in to get it. Cruz going to tag up from third. The throw coming in, not in time, and Booty dropped the ball, so Cruz in to score. Sack fly RBI for Trey Morgan, and it's 2 nothing Tigers. Well, I was just about to comment on Cruz's speed, getting from first to third on that single up the middle. The throw did not go to the plate, and there was not a throw to third base. And that ball right there, Chris, it was just a routine as you can be fly ball. And what was interesting about it is the wind brought Swinert almost into a full sprint coming into the ball to throw it. So he had everything behind him. And a perfect throw still wouldn't have had Cruz who tagged from third base. No, I think when he backpedaled in left field on a normal day without this type of breeze blowing in, that's probably where the ball lands in his mitt. So he backpedals, gets a beat on it, and then, as you said, realized he had to come up pretty quickly just to get to it. Cruz again using the speed, tags up, makes it a 2 nothing ball game. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. See Jared Jones step to the plate for the first time. And the pitch missing high with a fastball, and it's 1-0. Jones, the freshman out of Marietta, Georgia, another Georgia connection here. That tunnel that comes from the Peach State to the Bayou, the 1-0. Missing outside and away. Low, it's two balls, no strikes. I knew he's a big kid, 6'4", 230. He's a moose. Fourth-ranked catcher nationally, number one-ranked catcher in Georgia. Now there's a throw over to first base. Keep an eye on Tommy White, who now is slow to get up. And they're going to call for the training crew to come out. Is maybe jammed his hand or finger. It looked like that's what they're taking a look at, or his wrist right now. And that's not what you want to see here in the bottom of the first in, on opening day. No, I didn't. And see what happened. Maybe we'll get a replay. I mean, he looked like he winced. He went back, oh. and it was almost as if his hand or wrist got jammed in the dirt towards the bag, and he just wasn't able to get it cleanly, and he is certainly giving to that right hand and right wrist, so hopefully not going to be a serious injury, but they'll have to find a pinch runner, and they'll do so. And Jack Merrifield, the senior out of Prairieville, Get some instructions for Jay Johnson. He'll go in for White at first base with two down. Oh, man, that is not what you want to see. Jared Jones out of Walton High School there in Marietta. Career 450 hitter in four years at Walton High School. The right-hander awaits the 2-0 pitch. Misses upstairs for Miller. Make it 3-0. We'll see Jack Merrifield over at third base. Merrifield had some time last year at third base in the field. Here's the 3-0. Swung on, lifted in the air, down the line and right. Nevar going to give it a look, but it'll be four rows up out of play into the seats, make it three and one. Merrifield again called upon in some late spots as a pinch hitter in 2022. Yeah, he appeared in 28 games, had 13 starts. Last season. 
Merrifield takes a healthy lead off of first with two down. Here's a swing and a tap, but miss by Jones. That'll fill the count three and two. Just got a piece of it held on to by Budig, the catcher. And now Jones going to call for time and step out. Brady Neal, freshman catcher. On deck with two outs and a two nothing lead. Payoff delivery. Again, hit high in the air. Center field hanging up in the wind. Morrison settling under it. Now coming up, and he will be able to make the grab for out number three. But the Tigers get on the board in their first opportunity of the year. Two runs, two hits, one man left on. We go to the top of the second. Two nothing LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Elbertsons is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Elbertsons for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries and save weekly with digital coupons all in one place. With Elbertsons for you, you can earn rewards points every time you shop and redeem them for free groceries. Brand new Elbertsons for you members receive $5 off their next $25 purchase just for signing up. Download the Elbertsons app or go to Elbertsons.com to sign up. Elbertsons, fresh food, local flavors. Bridgeway Hospice is the official hospice of LSU Athletics. Bridgeway Hospice would like to thank you, South Louisiana, for allowing them to care for your loved ones. Help them celebrate 10 years of local hospice care by asking your health care provider for Bridgeway Hospice. They come to you in home, assisted living, or nursing facilities. Now with three locations to better care for your loved ones in the greater Baton Rouge, Acadiana, and Plaquemine areas. Bridgeway Hospice says go local and go Tigers. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At h and &E Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. h and &E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rentals, sales, parts, and service. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. 2 nothing LSU leads over Western Michigan here as we head to the top of the second inning. First game of the year. Again, originally scheduled for 6.30 Friday night. Got moved up to 3 o'clock Friday afternoon. And there are some who were dedicated to see the Tigers open up the season. And they are with us here at the box this afternoon leading things off Nevar the right fielder and Skeens picks up where he left off delivers a first pitch called strike and it's 0 and 1 pitch to Nevar just missed maybe high maybe a bit outside last year Nevar led this team in conference batting 347 325 overall for the year Jay Johnson mentioned it's a veteran team seen a lot of college baseball innings as this one lifted up foul behind the plate giving chase but out of play and that will make it one ball and one strike and you know how many times we've talked about Doug in our eight years on the air you take on a team that's had some innings even a team that maybe struggled two years ago struggled last year you get some guys who've got a ton of innings under their belt they can give you some trouble yeah the experience is just such a key factor in college baseball and there's a lot of juniors and seniors on this team that one just Ooh. misses the outside corner at 98 miles an hour to even to count at two and two you've got five juniors two seniors and two sophomores all of them had some time last year at some point two two from Skeens called strike three inside corner buckled the knees of Nevar and Skeens records the punch out. One down here in the top of the second inning. It'll be the second strikeout of the day for Skeens in the start. You heard Jay talking to him in the clubhouse earlier today. He really feels like certainly Paul Skeens has the ability, if need be, go to the distance. But he said today they're going to have him at about a 90 pitch count. Again, cooler weather, opening game of the year. No need to. 90 pitches opening night, huh? Yeah. Hmm. One out. Here's the 1-0. -oh. 
Budig, the catcher, takes a strike, evens it up, one and one, another fastball at 96. Doug, how do you like the addition of the 96.765? I do like it. Yeah. I do like it. Because you can average up and say that was 97. 98 plus, yeah. 97 plus. Yeah. Love it. There's the 1-1. One, one. At the knees, a cold strike at 97.6, so say 98. It's 1-2. and two. You want to make a hard and fast rule here on day one that you just automatically average it up instead of doing the decimal point? I'm in. All right. Try to be efficient with our words. Here's the one, two, way outside. That'll leave in the count two balls, two strikes. It's going a windy day for the most part blowing in. Maybe if this game, not that I'm begging for a long game, but if it stretches in when the Sun goes down. That wind might down, die down a bit. Here's the 2-2 lifted foul behind the plate out of play. Still 2-2 two and two the count to Budig, the catcher. Again, another junior on this team, another junior in this lineup, as Doug pointed out. Veteran heavy. The 2-2. Two -two. Here's the changeup. Oh, man. That one just missed and really fooled. Budig, who thought it might go behind him. Full count now, three and two. Skeens with two strikeouts, one walk. Payoff delivery. Got him to chase, swing and a miss. Fastball right through the bat. Two down, third strikeout of the day for Paul Skeens. He's going to have a lot of strikeouts this year. <laughs> I'm thinking 150 plus. In your expert opinion, you think? I think he's going to get to 150 plus. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of people that have had over 150 in a season, but I think he's going to be somewhere around that. Swinehart, the left fielder, bats for the first time. First pitch, couldn't catch up to it. Called strike at 97. It's 0 and 1. 27 total pitches now, 10 balls and 17 strikes for Paul Skeens. The 0 1. Just drops in low. Another fastball at 98. It's one and one. Man. I don't want any part of a 98-mile-an-hour fastball when it's good weather, much less when it's 40 degrees. Ground ball foul off the bat of Swinehart. Left of the third base bag, and it's one and two. You know, when Jay Johnson arrived here in June of 2021, when you talk to people who he had worked with, people who knew him in the coaching ranks, they talked about how hard he works. Here's the one, two. Breaking ball called strike three. We'll finish that story after this as there's another strikeout for Skeens, his fourth of the day. And that'll do it for the Broncos. They go in order here in the top of the second inning. No runs, no hits, nobody touches base. We go to the bottom of the second. It's a 2-0 LSU lead on the LSU Sports Radio Network. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. 
Tigers coming to the plate in the bottom of the second inning. They lead Western Michigan early here. Two to nothing. We'll see the debut at the plate of Brady Neal batting in the seven spot. The freshman catcher takes the first pitch, fouls it out of play left side. During the timeout, you remember the confusion on a three and two pitch that resulted in a strikeout to Joe Bear. Well, he was victim of this newly emphasized speed up the game as that one catches the outside corner to Neal and it's 0 and 2. So again it happened in Arkansas last year very controversial but the SEC announced a week ago there were going to be rules to again conference games to be sure but again those are rules that can be agreed upon with the coaches and umpires prior to a game but both pitchers and batters not a lot of fooling around now you got to get to action one and two the count to Brady Neal off speed misses outside letter high it's two and two well the good news is we didn't miss a pitch that's right told you I was right I just was wrong about the rule and normally I'm never right with math as Neal rips into this one oh, deep smoke. to center field going back at the track and reaching out couldn't hold on to it. The center fielder dropped it, got his hands on it, but Morrison couldn't come up with it. And credit Neal, never stopped moving around second, slides in safely to third, and a leadoff triple here in the bottom of the second inning. So, again, we've seen a couple of debuts. Tommy White, yeah. RBI single, first at bat for the Tigers. And here comes the catcher, freshman Brady Neal. He takes one to the wall in center field, comes away with a triple. That's got to be one of the first – debut triples in LSU history. So the Tigers with nobody out will have Jordan Thompson batting in the eighth spot. Veteran shortstop again told made huge strides in the offseason coming into the years. This pitch just gets out of the mitt of Budig. Goes to the right of home plate but he's able to track it down and Neal will stay put at third base. But you know I give Jay Johnson a lot of credit. There were times last year where everybody but Jay wanted Jordan Thompson to spend some time on the bench due to some defensive errors. And Jay kept saying, I believe this guy has potential. I believe this guy can be an elite SEC shortstop. Now, he'll have this year to prove that. But all indications are he has made light year improvements in the field. The 1-1 one -one fouled back into the screen right side, and it's 1-2. and two. Yeah, it's one of the guys that Jay really – spoke highly of last last week when we met and he said Thompson has made some big improvements not only often or not only defensively but offensively as well again he's shown his power in his time here at LSU and he'll swing after this one and swing over the ball come up empty down on strikes as Miller records the punch out that'll be his second strikeout of the day of course the early one aided by the delay of game against Braden Joe Bear one down still a runner at third and another debut, batting ninth, second baseman Ben Nipple, the second baseman, will bat from the left side. We'll see him try to drive in a run here with the Tigers up 2-0. First pitch, breaking ball, too far inside and low, and it's 1-0. Yeah, Nipple joining the Tigers from VCU last year, a first team, All-Atlantic 10 selection. Appeared in 51 games, batted 308. Here's a bouncer towards second coming over as Herity. His only play is to first to get Nippolt, and uh, that'll do it. And he'll get the runner home in Neal, who will score to make it 3 0. So the junior transfer does his job in his first at bat, bringing in a run, two down here in the bottom of the second inning. Again, great piece of hitting there. Yeah. Had a chance to put a bat on the ball, drive it opposite field, bring the run in. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Jordan Thompson not able to get that runner in from third with less than two outs. Clean slate now, top of the lineup for Paxton Kling. Kling hit by a pitch after seeing just two of those to start the bottom of the first inning. Here's a breaking ball for a strike from Miller to make it 0-1. Kling would come around to score. First run of the game for the Tigers. The 0-1, way upstairs and outside. One ball, one strike on the heater offered up by Brady Miller. Heard a lot of good stuff about Paxton Kling throughout the post or the preseason. The 2022 Gatorade Pennsylvania Player of the Year. 1-1. One, one. Big swing. Again, hangs up in the wind to center field. Morrison went back. Now coming in on the run as the wind carries it near right center, but he has it for out number three. The Tigers, though, played another run. They do it on one hit. 
And they leave no man on. We go down to the top of the third here in opening day at the box. 3-0 LSU over Western Michigan. Broncos to the plate when we return on the LSU Sports Radio Network. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. Touchdown! You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. It's good to be able to make a change, to never feel stuck. That's why at Cox, we're making a change, too. Now Cox Internet plans are flexible, so you can choose to just go with Internet, add TV tomorrow, or home automation down the line. It's easier than ever to get just what you want and nothing you don't. Flexible plans from Cox. Change any time. No commitments, no penalties. See for yourself at cox.com slash internet. Additional services can be added at then current regular rates. All services subject to residential customer service agreement and acceptable use policy. Restrictions apply. You want a carnival groove with the rhyme on top for 2023? We're gonna let a new beat drop. That's what I'm talking about. Money. LA Lottery in the house. Lottery search shops for carnival season. Play Mambo Mambo, win up to $2,000. And masquerade money, you can win up to $12,000. So many ways to win, I'm gonna play them again. You gotta be 21 to purchase. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. Touchdown! You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. The powerhouse of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. A reminder, Tiger fans, StubHub, the easiest way to experience every Tiger game. You can check the virtual view, score your seats, get your tickets delivered instantly. StubHub, official ticket marketplace of LSU Athletics. StubHub, be there. Paul Skeens back out on the bump here, top of the third inning. His Tigers up 3-0 over Western Michigan is the first time today. We'll see Bobby Deering, the DH, batting in the eight spot for the Broncos. Last year batted 333 on the season. And 333 in conference play. Yeah, but he only had three plate appearances. He's one for three. Skeens misses with the second pitch up high. It's one and one. Broncos play a little maction in conference play each year. That one misses high for ball two, two and one. And they play the four game weekend series. Usually a doubleheader on Saturdays, and that's why their conference mark took me by surprise, 15-24. and 24. So This one fouled into the air. Neal going to give chase, and the LSU catcher sees that it's out of play, and it evens the count two and two. That's a lot of baseball on the weekend to get that maction. You get plenty of maction. <laughs> that's plenty of maction, all right. <laughs> I see you raised that window up a little bit. Yeah, well, it was obstructing the view, so I'm just wanting to take all of the wind I can get. Reaching out with a bat, Daring going to drive this one into right field, down the line and into the corner. He's around first, not a ton of speed, but he'll have a stand-up double to lead things off here. The Broncos in the top of the third inning just put the bat on the ball. That's exactly what Deering did. That's it. I think maybe a three-quarter swing, but got the knock to make it out into right. I need to see the video replay to make sure his eyes were open on that one because you nailed it. He just kind of threw it out there, protecting the plate, and was able to get the barrel around it down the right field line. That's the first extra base hit of the game, the first hit of the game, for that matter, for Western Michigan. So a runner on second, bottom of the order for the Broncos, Brandon Herity. Starting second baseman, another left-hander to face the right-handed throwing to Paul Skeens. First pitch, heater inside. Couldn't decide whether he wanted to swing. Didn't matter. It's a strike, 0-1. And, Looks to second. Now Skeens, the delivery. Again, same pitch. Just missed a bit. And again, they'll say Harity was able to hold back. Evens a count. One and one. Now, Chris, I'm pretty sure you like Paul Skeen's fastball, his slider, all that good stuff, but I'm positive you like those high stirrups. Oh, no question. I was about to say after this 1-1, swing and a miss, gets ahead one and two. You mentioned the similarities you see in Paul Skeen's and Big Ben to our right doing TV now in his time here at LSU. And, again, he's got the classic look. 
Tall drink of water on the mound. He's got the stirrups pulled up, traditional style. Looks good. The one, two, See swing you. and a miss. Down on strikes goes Harity. Fifth strikeout of the day for Paul Skeens. One away in the top of the third. The old 97 mile an hour heater down around the knees. Tough to catch up with that one. And as you mentioned, five punch outs and only two and a third for Skeens. Morrison, top of the order, will step in. He's 0 for 1 on the day. First delivery with a runner at second. Just off the outside corner, misses ball one. Again, he let off the game with a three foot rolling baseball down the third base line, picked up by Brady Neal for the there it is. throw out to first. There is the strike, evens it up one and one. Leadoff double has Deering down at second base. As Doug mentioned, first hit of the day off Skeens. First extra base hit for the Broncos here in the early season. One out, runner at second. Here's the 1 1. Missing low, 2 and 1. You know, Skeens was so good in the fall. Coach Johnson actually told me that there were multiple outings where they actually had to put base runners on the bases. So he could practice some pickoff moves and bunt defenses and things of the like. Here's a swing and a foul ball over the first base dugout out of play. Keeps it two and two. Runner at second, one down, 2-2 two -two delivery. Sharply hit ground ball, diving for it, but can't come up with it as Merrifield ricochets off his glove. Thompson will retrieve it in shallow left center. Runner, however, Deering stays put at second base and arriving safely at first will be Morrison. Again, Merrifield having to stretch to his left. Again, in for Tommy White, who was injured after reaching first base on an RBI single. Yeah, tried to get it on the third hop, was able to get the glove on it. In hindsight, I would almost rather see Jordan Thompson backhand it and try to throw it across the diamond, but Merrifield can't think like that over at third base. you got to get what you can, but nobody really hurt now. The double play back in order. One down, runners first and second. To the plate comes Allen. Allen 0 for 1, and somehow that one misses. Tiger fans... Already here, not even three full innings. They're, <laughs> it's on cold. The, they're on the umpires. What do you know? Here's the 1 0. And that is in for a strike. Another fastball at 98. One ball and one strike. Yeah, Jimmy Allen was the first strikeout victim of the game for Paul Skeens back in the first. Runners take their lead. This heater misses high. Two balls and one strike. Again, the game, as we mentioned, moved up a little bit. Again, the sun, for the most part, has been out today, but it's been extremely cold, kind of a cold snap after spending most of this week in the 70s, albeit yesterday heavy rains. But, man, there is a dedicated LSU baseball fan base. Here's the swing and a miss to even the count. Skeens evens it up two and two. They are here at the box. They're covered up. They got their blankets. Yeah. Three I to four little layers and uh, they weren't going to miss this regardless of when they started. One out runners first and second 2-2 two -two. gold strike three right at the knees. Skeens with his sixth strikeout of the day now two gone and Allen down on strikes. Both appearances at the plate and now time called looks like Wes Johnson pitching coach going out. Got a hustle on a very quick sprint now to this new time rules. And I'm assuming because there was a batter delay call against Joe Bear and the way Wes Johnson was sprinting to the mound that maybe the coaches have agreed to the sped up rules that the SEC will institute this season. Yeah, just to practice it. You know, I think he's only got, what, two minutes for a mound visit? Yep. Clock began to run again. They're going to enforce the 22nd pitch clock. They're going to enforce the two and a half minutes for a call to the bullpen that 
here at LSU at the box because the bullpens yeah. are in the corners. As soon as they cross the foul line, the clock will begin. Two and a half minutes. They got to be pitching the baseball back in play. As here's a first pitch strike to Doyle, and it's 0-1 from Skeens, who again, a double to lead off to Deering. Infield single by Harity, or rather Morrison, I should say. And runners first and second, but Skeens again has got the double play in play here and has had success throwing strikes so far today with six strikeouts to one walk. One and one the count to Doyle, a right hander. The pitch. There's another strike, and he gets ahead one and two. I mean, he is literally sitting at 97 to 99 miles an hour and he's at 53 not, pitches I'm not even looking anymore I've looked every pitch and it's 96 97 98 very comfortable in that zone two outs runners first and second the one two swing and a miss how about his seventh punch out of the day and he leaves two stranded here in the top of the third inning no runs two hits two men left on LSU leads three to nothing. Bottom of the third. Tigers come to the plate next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Put a frog in boiling water and it'll jump right out. But put a frog in cool water and slowly heat it up, that frog will boil. As veterans, we tell ourselves the lie that we can handle anything. We let the water boil. You are not a frog. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. That's va.gov slash reach. Brought to you by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and the Ad Council. It's going to the track, the wall. See ya! Tiger fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Jelly Jelly adjective Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Adopt U.S. Kids and the Ad Council Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Bottom of the third inning, your Fighting Tigers leading over Western Michigan here in game one of the season. 3 nothing. Braden Joe Bear to lead it off. Strikeout victim is first at bat. Again, we found out after the fact that it was a what they call batter's interference, taking too much time. Not allowing the pitcher to bring it to the plate, and they added a strike to the count, and eventually a strike on the inside corner. Gave Miller, starting pitcher for the Broncos, his second punch out of the day, and he's ahead now of Joe Bear. Or now an even count, one and one. Here's the delivery. Inside corner again. That's where he's trying to keep Braden in on the hands, and he does get ahead, does Miller, one and two. Yeah, that was off speed inside corner. It's a little bit up in the zone as well, but Joe Bear going to have another two strike count to get through here foul tip comes out of the mid of Budig and Joe Bear will stay alive with a one two count plenty of things to do on campus this weekend back started last night women's basketballs win over Ole Miss to get back to their winning ways the one two off the end of the bat popped into the air to center field Morrison staying flat footed now will pedal to his left get under it for out number one Joe Bear Retired Kim Mulkey and company now 24 and one got the weekend started later tonight LSU gymnastics in action. They'll take on number two Florida across the street at the Maravich Center at eight o'clock. Yeah, that should be a packed house. They were already underway when we arrived here at the box at Tiger Park in the Tiger Classic Beth Torina and softball. They'll be playing throughout the weekend. Here's Dylan Cruz. And the first delivery of strike on the outside corner to Dillon to make it 0-1. Had a base hit. Came around to score did Cruz in his first at bat of the year. 
men's basketball tomorrow at 12 noon and of course baseball here all weekend this one way outside gets away from Budig the catcher all the way to the backstop just a bit outside and it's one and one. So if you don't have plans or thinking of what you should do come on out to LSU's campus the one one big swing but fouled back into the screen by Cruz it's one ball two strikes tomorrow 130 first pitch in game two the Broncos and Tigers two Tiger champions will control the broadcast booth Doug Thompson and Buzzy Heidel. Here's the one two to Cruz slap ground ball gets through by the shortstop diving Jimmy Allen can't get to it and Cruz pretty good start here two for two in the 2023 season and with one out Tigers have a man aboard and we will see to the plate Jack Merrifield who again if you're just tuning in Tommy White started the game at third base got aboard. Kling was on base. He delivered an RBI single just left of second base and then on a pickoff attempt sliding back to first it appeared he injured his right hand or wrist and was escorted to the training room and Merrifield checked in so he'll bat for the first time today a hit and run called for by Jay Johnson. How about that. But a foul tap by Merrifield into the screen to the right will bring Cruz back. That's the other question Doug. I'm sure you talked to Jay about I certainly did. When you look at the offensive firepower that this team at least on paper has at their disposal does it change your offensive mindset how aggressive you are in a given game and he said yeah he wasn't too committal on giving me all the secrets but he said you know a year ago we were limited as to how much we could gamble with hit and run how much we could gamble with stealing bases each base was so precious to us. It'll be interesting to see how that works out this year. The 1-1 one, one, up the middle by Merrifield, but hit right at the second baseman, Harity, who steps on the bag, throws to first for the twin killing. Perfect placement by Harity and Merrifield, who really put a torque on that baseball, hit it right at the Broncos' second baseman, and he makes the play. So the Tigers are retired, no runs, one hit, nobody left on. We go to the top of the fourth in game one. LSU leading Western Michigan. 3 nothing on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Now batting in the cleanup position, Jenny King, the king of clean. Tiger fans, Jenny King is a proud partner of LSU Athletics and even more proud to provide you, the players, and every fan that comes to a game here with a healthy stadium that has been cleaned by our team of professionals. Let us clean and disinfect your business. Go to JennyKingCleans.com now. That's JennyKingCleans.com. can only mean one thing in Baton Rouge, LSU football season. From tailgating to the final quarter, the Tigers are in it to win it. And when the home game is over, there's plenty to discover in the red stick. Whether you're visiting Mike the Tiger for the first time or sightseeing on the mighty Mississippi River, our city is ready to welcome you for a matchup to remember. So grab your tickets, come on down for kickoff, then find more to explore at visitbatonrouge.com. Southern Air Heating and Cooling is proud to be an official sponsor of LSU Athletics. Their team of AC professionals have been serving the comfort needs of the people of Louisiana for over 25 years. Much like the fans of the Tigers, our commitment to Tiger Athletics and providing great service remains as strong as ever. Southern Air Heating and Cooling. Go Tigers! LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Kate Sullivan going to lead it off for the Broncos of Western Michigan here in the top of the fourth inning. They trail LSU 3-0. First delivery from Skeens going to be driven foul down the line into the seats in right, and it is 0-1 to Sullivan. Sullivan flied out to left field, and Braden Jobear his first at bat in the first inning. Skeens off to a great start. Three full innings thus far. Two hits given up. One walk, seven strikeouts. There's a swing and a foul tip. And it's 0 and 2. Doug, the difference, I w- we were talking about the offense, which we'll pick up on when the Tigers come to the plate in the bottom of the fourth, but also changes the strategy completely from a pitching standpoint this year. What a wicked breaking ball. 
fooled Sullivan. He didn't even attempt. Outside corner called strike, and there is one down. Eight strikeouts for Skeens. But when you look at the weekend rotation, Skeens, of course, Riley Cooper, maybe a little surprising to people, going to get the call to start tomorrow. But last year you had pitchers who could maybe give you four or five on a good day. As this pitch misses high and outside to Nevar. But you already knew what are we going to do in the middle innings? Who are we going to use on the back end? Who is our bridge guy? Total different look strategy wise with Wes Johnson and company. At least with this crew they have not only starting pitcher candidates but bullpen relievers. It'll be interesting to see how different it looks for LSU this year. Yeah, last year was really a lot of bite your fingernails type games where you hope that starter gets into the fifth inning. This year, talking to Coach Johnson, they're so deep that they might be able to actually develop four or five starting pitchers. 1-1 one, one just missed outside on another fastball at 97 by Skeens to make it 2-1 and one to Nevar, who was caught looking by Skeens his first time up in the second inning. But one thing that can extend a pitcher's outing is run support. 2-1. To your point. Going to be lifted in the air to left. Joe Bear trailing back. Now he has it and gloves it for out number two. Two gone here in the top of the fourth inning. No, that certainly does help. Complimentary baseball, as yeah. Jay Johnson likes to say. Skeens now up to 61 pitches in the ball game. 39 strikes, 22 balls. And as Chris mentioned, eight strikeouts through three and two thirds. The catcher Budig at the plate. The right hander first pitch base hit slapped through the six hole into left field. Confident swing there by the Broncos catcher and with two out he is aboard. Well I guess he was watching that radar gun too Doug and said I'm going to guess it's going to be 97 and I'm just going to just swing swing. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, with a guy like Skeens, with with any pitcher really, a great hitter would would tell you that they've got to look for fastball first and adjust to everything else. But with Skeens, you have no choice. Runner at first, two down. Swinehart, the left fielder, late coming around on that offering. It's 0 and 1. Swinehart caught looking by Skeens back in the second. Skeens delivers, lifted in the air, foul. Morgan gives it a look, but it'll be out of play just beyond the first base dugout. 0-2 oh the count. Also like Skeens' tempo. Not a whole lot of time between pitches. Pitch clock underway. Hasn't been a problem for Skeens. Here's the 0-2, just low. Swinehart had an idea, but last moment held back the bat. It's one and two. Tigers three runs on four hits. The Broncos have put together three hits so far. The one two and on the hands. I'll say Swinehart held back again. It's two and two. Even if he did hold back, what didn't miss by much. Where did that miss? <laughs> no. Well, you love it when a pitcher is performing as Skeens is thus far. And the 2-2, a chopping ground ball to short. Thompson comes in a couple of steps. Great throw to first in time to Morgan. And that'll do it for the Broncos. Again, no runs, one hit, and one man left on. We've played three and a half here at the box. LSU leads 3-0. Tigers to the plate when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of his students had asked the question, and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how we change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, 
meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! It's 4 a.m., Monday, and you're literally sucking baby snot through a tube because she's congested. Man, that's love. And if you love her that much, love her enough to make sure she's buckled in the right car seat. To make sure your child's in the right seat for their age and size, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Fans right now get a low rate, long-term financing on powerful Kubota tractors, mowers, and utility vehicles. Just visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer and test drive a Kubota today. Your Tigers lead it 3-0 over Western Michigan here on opening day at the box. Tigers come to the plate. Trey Morgan to lead it off. And the first pitch, a called strike, which shocks Morgan. He become accustomed to Morgan when it's a ball. He'll spin away inside towards the umpire. He did it there, but home plate umpire Eddie Newsom called it strike one. Here's the 0-1. Skips off the plate to even the count. One ball, one strike. Brady Miller, starting pitcher for the Broncos. Three full innings of work, four hits given up. Got touched up for two runs in the bottom of the first, one more in the bottom of the third. All three runs earned. Two strikeouts, no walks. Off speed at the belt, called strike. And it's one and two to Morgan, who had the sack fly RBI. Out to left field his last time up to bring in that second run. Here's the one, two. This one does miss outside with a fastball. And it's two balls and two strikes. But going back to our conversation, Doug, about how it opens up the playbook, so to speak. 2-2. Fly ball to shallow right center field. Three Broncos converge. Eventually, the center fielder makes the call and makes the grab. Will Morrison records out number one. You know, Trey Morgan's got good speed. Dylan Cruz, we saw it earlier, tagging up from third base. Jordan Thompson with speed. Ben DePole, speedy guy. So, Jay Johnson, whose father was a football coach, he likes to use that terminology, being able to open the playbook up this year to being more aggressive. When, again, just not able to or felt like they were able to a year ago. So, we'll see Jared Jones bat for the second time. The first pitch from Miller misses high off speed, 1-0. and Jared Jones going with the yellow spikes. 1-0 pitch in on the hands. Foul ball towards the first base dugout, giving chase and just out of the reach of Kate Sullivan, who at the last moment realized he was barreling down on what would be a concrete barrier with a little bit of padding, eventually able to get his hands in front of him. Otherwise, that would have been a nasty collision, and you normally lose against concrete, but he can't hold on to it, and that will allow Jones to stay alive at the plate with a 1-1 count. Jared Jones' father played football at Georgia Southern, former Eagle. 1985 to 1989 when the Eagles were racking up one double-A championships. Here's a swing and a miss, and it evens the count to Jones, two and two. One away, 2-2 two -two pitch from Miller. Just a little tapper towards the mound. Miller can't glove it, left of the mound. Allen, the shortstop, comes flying in, makes the grab, throws to first, just beats out Jones for out number two. Tough play by Jimmy Allen. It's always tough, you're charging in on contact there, Doug. You got your pitcher stretched out. You're trying to see whether or not he can make a play. If he deflects the ball, where it goes, and Allen just had to stay focused, come all the way in, make a great throw to first. Yeah, usually the pitcher deflects that when it screws the whole thing up. But there, Brady Miller just couldn't quite get to it, which inevitably led to the out. 
Brady Neal is looking at the clock, saying there's only two seconds on it. Now home plate Eddie Newsom, I believe, saying my bad. They'll reset it. At least he was pointing to himself. Yes, they will reset it to 20 seconds. One more thing to deal with. This one misses low and inside to Neal on the first offering. Had a triple when he led things off in the second inning. Came around to score that lone run in the bottom of the second frame. One out to the warning track and the walls. Morrison got a glove on it but couldn't hold on. But a pretty good poke into this win. Yeah. We didn't talk much about it, but it was absolutely crushed out to right center. 2-0 misses inside at the hands. Now three balls, no strikes to Brady Neal. That'll be ball four. So the first walk offered up today by Brady Miller, who again has pitched well. You said it earlier, you got to get run support. And while Miller's given up three earned runs, he's not pitching horribly. But again, his team's got to go up against Paul Skeens, and that's been a losing affair thus far. Two outs, runner on for the Tigers, and we'll see Jordan Thompson before he bats. Jay Johnson calling for time. He'll bring him over and talk with him and Napolt a little bit, as well as Neal. They'll all meet near the on-deck circle here with Coach Johnson with two outs. Tigers leading 3-0. You can almost hear the defenders going, come on, let's go. Maybe that's part of what Jay Johnson's trying to do here. That and give Skeens a little bit more rest, let him warm up. Everybody looking to warm up right now. Lots of camouflage throughout the stands in this ball game. It'd really be a nice night if it weren't so windy. Yeah, you get rid of the wind, not too bad. I mean, the temperature again is at game time was right around 48 degrees. It's 47 degrees now. And again, that wind, you know, the wind chill becomes a factor. Two outs, runner at first for the Tigers. And a throw over. Keep an eye on Neal as he slides back safely. Probably wise, though, to start it at 3 p.m. Because it's really going to be cold when the sun goes down. Swing and a lift to center field. Again, Morrison, that ball carries towards right center. And the Broncos center fielder been plenty busy out there in center field as he makes another grab for out number three. Tigers done. No runs, no hits. They do leave one man on base. We go to the top of the fifth inning. It's a 3-0 LSU lead over Western Michigan. Back after this on the LSU Sports. Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, don't miss out on the latest John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available. From Alex Box Stadium to your own backyard, the grass is always greener behind the wheel of a John Deere. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends May 28, 2023. Hi, I'm Kevin Falk, LSU Hall of Famer. My years at LSU were amazing. I've always loved celebrating with my teammates, especially when someone was serving up some delicious Manda sauce. For a lot of Tiger fans, it's just not game day without Manda in the mix. Serving top quality sauces in original season is Manda's strong side, but it's not Manda's flavor that's always got me running back for more. You get it? Running back for more. After 75 years, the flavor still says it all. Manda Fine Meats, the official smoke sauce of LSU Athletics. Our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, two of Louisiana's premier institutions, combining efforts like never before. Together, we're tackling challenges from research to student health and cancer to cardiovascular care. Together, we're training top-tier athletes and the next generation of healthcare professionals. Together, we're creating lasting change, building a healthier, stronger Tiger family. Our Lady of the Lake and LSU, together we roar. The roar of LSU fighting Tiger baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 
Three nothing ball game here on opening day at the box. LSU up on Western Michigan as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Broncos come to the plate leading things off. Will be Bobby Deering, the DH hitting in the eighth spot. He had a double back in the second inning. Rather third inning and was left stranded. Skeen's ready to fire off the end of the bat. Foul ball out of play. And it's 0-1. I neglected to give you the game day forecast, which is brought to you by AccuTemp. Chance of power outages never. Get a whole home generator from AccuTemp. Keep the power in your hands, as we mentioned. Currently 47 degrees. There's some some clouds, but it's mostly sunny today. Just bone cold here in South Louisiana. Overnight low is going to be right around 37. Maybe down to 33, I stand corrected. About 5 a.m., you can step outside, Duder, and it'll be near freezing. Here's the 0-2 from Skeens. Just staying alive as Deering sends it back to the backstop. It's 0-2. Tomorrow going to warm up a little bit better. You and Dougie may not be as cold as we are today. Are you and Buzzy, I should say, 60 degrees. That's a little bit better. Yeah, we'll have the windows open tomorrow. Tonight, though. Oh, I have mine open. I know you do. I feel it. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Skeens records strikeout number nine. One gone here in the top of the fifth inning. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I pitched. Is nine strikeouts and four and a third good? <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say yeah. Maybe the number's 160 on the year. Again. You know, Ben McDonald had 202 strikeouts one season. But that seems almost untouchable. Ben used to start on Friday and close on Sunday. Harity takes the first offering, missing upstairs from Skeens. Another fastball, and it's been a steady diet of fastball. We've seen, especially early in this game, a pretty wicked slider. But Skeens is coming right after these Broncos. The 1 0 misses inside. Again, fastball offering makes it 2 0. Harity at the plate, one of those nine strikeout victims today. With one out, the 2-0. Hammered down the line, but foul in right. And we'll wow. get to the seats. It's now two balls and one strike. You know, a guy like Skeens, he'll go that first time through the lineup with all fastballs. And if there's a if it's necessary to adjust and mix some other pitches, you'll see more through the second time. But he hasn't really needed to go to a slider or changeup so far. See Gavin do guys. Yeah. Warming down there near the pin, so expect to see him maybe enter the lineup here in just a bit. Three and one as this one misses now to Herity. But again, four and a third for Skeens. Three hits given up, no runs, one walk, nine strikeouts. Three one pitch and on the hands and foul just above the third base dugout. Into the screen. That'll fill the count at three and two. Excited about the return of the Jay Johnson show coming to TJ Ribs. Tell you more about that after this ground hey, ball down the first baseline. Snagged by Morgan. He'll toss to Skeens, covering it first for out number two. And Morgan hasn't lost no. a step at all, covering the ground at first base. Made that look easy going to his right, records the second out of the inning. Yeah, you said it. it, it he made it look easy. That in no way is a routine play. First of all, the range for Morgan to get over to that spot. You don't see many first basemen able to cover ground like that, but he just covered it up like it was nothing, flipped it over to Skeens, who was covering first. Jay Johnson's show premieres on March 27th at TJ Ribs. Hope to see you out there from 7 to 8 p.m. Showing bunt, but pulling it back is Morrison as the Broncos move back to atop the order. Morrison one for two, had a base hit in the third. Left stranding as all the Broncos who have reached base today. Here's the 0-1. Down the middle for strike two. Fastball right at 97. No decimal needed. And this will be the 80th pitch of the game for Skeens. You mentioned Coach Johnson saying he's going to let him go to 90. There's no action down in the bullpen, so presumably we'll see him back out for the sixth if he gets through this. Fastball fouled back into the screen, and it stays at 0-2. Yeah, that caught my attention when Dugas was down there. I thought maybe they were going to start warming somebody because Jay did say 90 was kind of the preferable number today in the debut of Skeens for a number of reasons. It's early in the season. He's your Friday night guy, and it's 
forty seven degrees and the winds blowing. Hasn't seemed to have affected him at all. The 0 2 tried to nibble the inside corner, just missed. It's one and two. There's that sinking fastball into a right hander at 95 miles an hour. Wind has not let up today. The 1 2 punched him out right down the middle. Morrison couldn't decide. Eddie Newsom did our home plate umpire. That is strikeout number 10 for Paul Skeens in his debut. Broncos done here in the top of the fifth. No runs, no hits, nobody touches base. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning with the Tigers leading 3 0 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hub International is Louisiana's premier employee benefits and commercial insurance brokerage. Hub can insure just about any risk that your business faces. Did you know Hub even insured the bonuses for our football coaches in 2022? Hub specializes in the construction, healthcare, real estate, and hospitality industries. Chances are you're probably already doing business with someone who does business with Hub. Turn to the agency that the Tigers, Saints, and Pelicans choose, Hub International. Visit them today at hubinternational.com. You want a carnival groove with the rhyme on top for 2023? We're gonna let a new beat drop. Mm-hmm. drop. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Mystery money. LA Lottery in the house. Lottery search us for carnival season. Play Mambo Mambo, win up to $2,000. And masquerade money, you can win up to $12,000. So many ways to win, I'm gonna play them again. You gotta be 21 to purchase. And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any Coke fan, so make sure you... Jim. <laughs> Jim. We're on the air. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. Your thoughts, Jen? Well, can I have a sip? <laughs> Jen, we're in the middle of reporting the news. I need to try it first. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers come to the plate, leading it off. Ben Nepal, second baseman for the Tigers, takes the first pitch offered up by Brady Miller, called strike. It's 0 1. Nepal today grounded out but drove in a run back in the second inning. Pitch to the left hander hesitates and again a cold strike makes it 0 and 2. Ben's not worried about this weather either. St. Paul, Minnesota guy. The 0 2 late with the bat, ground ball to short. Allen with the backhand turns and fires in time for out number one. So the bolt trying to go opposite field, hit it right at the Broncos shortstop. And with one down. That'll take us back to the top of the order and Paxton Kling who was hit by a pitch came around to score in the first to fly out to center into this wind last time in the second frame. You know Skeens is up to 82 pitches after five innings of work. Brady Miller on the other hand only at 61 with one out here in the fifth. Kling showing bunt pulls it back but a called strike nonetheless. A fastball from Miller makes it 0 and 1. Some more personnel headed down to the bullpen for LSU. They're all still sitting down there. Nobody up yet. A couple of guys stretching. They'll appeal down to first. They say Kling went around on that offering, and he's down to the count 0-2. We'll wait and see. They'll take off the bullpen jacket, see who maybe starts to throw, and soft toss down there for Coach Johnson. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Nice breaking ball. Fell off the table from Miller. He records the punch out, clean down on strikes. Third strikeout for Miller on the day. And, you know, Jay Johnson, I mentioned it earlier, Doug. The Broncos, three hits. They haven't been able to close in and get on into home plate. But you know, Miller's doing a pretty good job here after giving up three runs in the first two innings. Seems like he's settled down a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, less than 12 pitches an inning. He's thrown 39 strikes out of 64 pitches. Joe Bear takes a big cut but fouls it out of play. And one of the things he's done really well is get ahead of hitters just like that 0-1 now to Joe Bear. Jay Johnson, when talking about this Broncos team, said, hey, they've got a lot of veteran players and 
first name out of his mouth was Brady Miller. He said, including the right-hander we'll see today as Joe Bear jacks this one down the line, but foul towards the operations center and practice facility. It's 0-2 now to Joe Bear. Talk about a guy who can get a baseball out of a ballpark. Brain Joe Bear certainly, we talked about his numbers from a year ago, but plenty of power in that bat with two down. And an 0-2 count, Miller to the plate. Misses high, one and two. Yeah, Joby's now had three at-bats where he's had a two-strike count. A little confusion in the first at-bat with the time limit strike called on him. The one-two pitch, ground ball, but a bouncer foul. First base side, keeps it one and two. Fans just like the winning lineup, Sintas has the all-star services for all your business needs, everything from uniforms to kitchens, and restroom solutions. Get ready for the workday with Sintas. 3 nothing LSU leads. Here's the 1 2. Sharply hit ground ball by a diving first baseman, Sullivan, but Harity backs him up at second. Miller covers it first. He throws to the pitcher for out number three. Another great job of concentration. We saw Jimmy Allen in the last inning do it at shortstop. Harity doing it there at second for the Broncos. So the Tigers are done. No runs. They get no hits, nobody gets on base, and we head to the top of the six with the Tigers leading the Broncos 3-0 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. You owe me five bucks. We mean every single. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, Tiger fans, your new favorite local delivery app is here. Download the ASAP app to get all of your game day needs delivered right to your door. All season long, make sure to use promo code TIGERS22. You'll score $5 off your order and automatically be entered in the winner winner ASAP dinner sweepstakes for a chance to win tickets to see the Tigers in action. That's promo code TIGERS22. ASAP.com is the official mobile ordering partner of LSU Athletics. Does your furnace have trouble keeping your home comfortable? Why spend another chilly winter worrying about repair bills and expensive heating costs? With the superior performance and efficiency of a Luxair heating system, you can stay warm and cozy while saving money. Your local Luxair dealer can provide a free assessment of your home's heating system and recommend a solution that's tailored to your needs and your budget. Affordable financing options are available. Make a smart choice in home comfort by visiting solarsupply.us. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. Touchdown! You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Back to the action of LSU oh, Fighting check, check. Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports right. Radio Network. There's no bump on that. Top of the sixth inning, Skeens continues to work out on the mound in his debut of the Tigers, and uh, much like most of today, starts off with a called strike. It's 0-1 to Jimmy Allen, batting second in the order. He's 0-2 for 2 on the day for Coach Gernon and the Broncos. The 0-1 from Skeens. That one gets loose a little bit. One ball, one strike. One of the things I know, Doug, that you former pitchers, Ben McDonald talks about it on the broadcast. You talk about it on the broadcast. It's when a guy is dialed in and you see the number of pitches now climbing towards 90 as they'll appeal down to first. They say Allen went around. That'll move the count to one and two. He's not missing badly, and he's barely missing with the balls he has thrown today. When he's missed, he has wanted to miss, and he has barely missed off the edges, like right there. Wow. One, two, just off the black of the outside corner. Evens it up, two balls, two strikes. And you talked about Skeen's tempo today. He is very deliberate, ready to go, and that one, you could tell he thought he had that. The 2-2. Two, two. Foul ball into the screen off the bat of Allen. Keeps it two balls, two strikes. And and don't forget, he's going to hit 90 pitches here in the next couple pitches, and he's still up there at 95, 96 miles an hour. 
and he has pitched the whole way through, just missing off the edges and appropriate counts. He'll come right after him right here. Allen, the leadoff hitter with a 2-2, bouncing ground ball to second. Napolt throws to first in time, one down. So Allen retired. That'll bring Doyle to the plate. We do have Ty some Floyd soft down tossing down in the Tiger bullpen. See Indeed a single it is. digit. Yep, it is Ty Floyd. Another guy who we're told, Doug, and it's great news, made major strides forward in the offseason. Yeah, picked up a breaking ball. This one misses high and outside on the offering to Doyle. And, you know, that was. Jay Johnson talked about it. Ty Floyd talked about it last year. We talked about it. That was really all he needed and really worked on it towards the end of the season trying to get command of a breaking pitch. The 1 0. Low and inside for ball two because goodness knows he can spin the baseball with the heater and now just not able for guys to just sit there waiting on it, make them think a little bit. Here's the 2 0 from Skeens and he will get that one across. Another fastball sitting right in there at 96, 97 miles an hour, and it's two and one. That's the thing I love about Jay Johnson. He's a player's coach to the sense, Doug, that he was rooting for Ty Floyd last year. There's a swing and a miss to even the count two and two. Really had a lot of belief in the same way he kept believing in Jordan Thompson and has really built up Ty Floyd, got his confidence back, working on that breaking pitch, makes him a Different pitcher expected here in 2023. The 2-2 two -two again, barely missing outside, fills the count three and two. Should mention, by the way, Eddie Newsom. I've mentioned his name behind the plate. There's a called strike three. That time it did get the outside corner. And there's one down as Skeens adds one more to his total. K Lady busy. It's 11 strikeouts today for Paul Skeens in his debut. Ray Gregson, our umpire at first, Ryan Broussard at second, and Alex Ziegler down the line at third. I love and always make sure I give the umpires their due credit. Yeah, yeah. That fastball, when it hit the mid, I guarantee you could hear it on the 50 yard line, Tiger Stadium. <laughs> Kate Sullivan now stands in. He's 0 for 2, including a strikeout. Sends this one to the backstop foul. It's 0 and 1. I mean, it's almost uncanny, Doug. Every pitch now, it's 96 point something. I mean, time and time and time again. And as you said, a little above the pitch count that Jay had told us about. Now at, what, 95? In the vicinity is Ty Floyd now on the bump down in the pin throwing. Here's oh, the. That was filthy. 0-1, completely <laughs> fooled Sullivan. He was just trying to fight that one off inside, and it's 0-2. <laughs> that, that was disgusting. I mean, the bottom just fell out of it. He throws a slider, but that one had a little bit more of a slurve action on it. It was tighter, 84 miles an hour. And as you mentioned, Sullivan really didn't have much of a chance. Two outs, the 0-2. Oh, missed somewhere. Ran that up to 98. Make it one ball, two strikes. Looked like a pretty good pitch from here. I agree. So Sullivan gets a reprieve. Here's the one-two. That's called strike three. Strikeout number 12 on the day for Paul Skeens. Have a debut, Paul. That'll do it for the Broncos in the top of the sixth inning. They go in order. No runs, no hits, nobody on base. Tigers lead 3-0. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Purple and gold to the plate when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. My husband had a, a gun. Him and his friends would go shooting. The ammunition, unfortunately, was not stored separately. In a million years, we never thought that Emily could. There's a hole in our family that can never, ever be filled. 63 Americans a day die by gun suicide. With safe gun storage, we can give our loved ones a second chance at life. Learn more at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by Brady and the Ad Council. Going to the track, the wall, see ya! 
Tiger fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and experiences connect through conversation, and it feels good. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together. Start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Great day to be at the ballpark. Opening day 2023 here at Alec Box. LSU enjoying a 3-0 lead over Western Michigan. Dylan Cruz will lead it off for the Tigers. Cruz today, two for two. Base hit came around to score in the first. Base hit. Left stranded in the third. First pitch from Miller misses for ball one. The 1 0 in on the hands. It's now two balls, no strikes. We may have seen the last of Paul Skeens today, but it's one we certainly will remember. I know the fans will. They were anticipating catching the debut of Paul Skeens. The Friday night starter is designated by Jay Johnson as that one's in for a strike to make it two and one. And that's a pretty good start for old Paulie. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a ground ball foul third base way. It's two and two. Looks like Ty Floyd will be up next on the mound for LSU when that time comes. And we also see some activity starting to toil down for the Broncos in the left field bullpen. Two and two the count to Dylan Cruz. Pitch from Miller. Breaking ball and he fights it off with a ground ball towards the bullpen in right. Still two and two. Tiger fans, get ready to taste victory with a victory grill from Barbecue Guys. Get your victory grill today. Become a backyard barbecue champ only at bbqguys.com. Another 2-2 pitch. The breaking ball drops down and away from Cruz. Good take as he eyes that one into the mitt. It's now a full count, 3-2. and two. He's pitching Cruz really tough this at bat. He's located on both sides of the plate. The 3 is hammered foul down the line in right into the parking lot. Wait for it. No horn, no sound effects. Okay, three and two. Got to be careful here, though. If you keep throwing it out there on the outer half, Cruz very capable to put one in the diamond deck. Three, two misses high and outside for ball four. So Miller gives up the base on balls his second of the day. Cruz reaches safely to first base for his third time this afternoon. And it looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter here. Merrifield had checked in for Tommy White, who again appeared to have a hand or wrist injury. And indications early, Doug, we should point out. We don't know anything, nothing definitive, right. but it may have looked worse as he left the field than maybe they initially think. But again, there'll be many more tests. We certainly hope so. It's yeah. a we've all been excited to see schemes. We've all been excited to see. Tommy White in the purple and gold, an unfortunate got the RB high single in his first at bat and then on a pickoff attempt, maybe jammed his hand or wrist as sliding back to the bag. But hopefully nothing serious as we have a little mound visit here for the Broncos and it appears Miller's going to stay put for now. And again, Josh Pearson, I mentioned, appears to have picked up the bat and a helmet and will bat in place of Merrifield who initially took over for Tommy White at third. And Pearson, can you talk about managing a roster, Doug? Pearson was one of the bright spots for the Tigers last year in a number of ways. Yeah, no doubt. Defensively and at the plate. And here he is. Again, a lot of teams would love to have a pinch hitter in Josh Pearson. Not that that's well here. He will stay this year. As this one's fouled into the screen. It's 0-1. Yeah, Pearson had 35 starts last year. Hit 299 with eight home runs. 
He was certainly a bright spot on last year's ball club. Again, Cruz on the walk. He's down at first base. Last time, Jay Johnson tried a little hit and run with Merrifield at the plate. This time, Pearson line drive shot, and it is foul. Almost took first base umpire Ray Gregson with it as he just able to skirt out of the way. And that was a rocket shot down the line. 0-2 oh, yeah. the count. And with, with regards to Tommy White, again, the, the early reports are better than expected. We don't know much yet, but, you know, this is where you see that depth. A guy like Tommy White comes out of the game. Merrifield, who also is a heck of a player, was the first sub. And now you have a guy like Josh Pearson at 300 his first time through last year. We were able to go two off the bench still. Here's the 0-2. Misses outside, sliding over is Budig, the catcher, and it's one ball, two strikes. Well, I tell you, Chris, I was searching for the last time an LSU pitcher had 12 strikeouts, and old Billy Frankes, he just comes through every time. Skeen's 12 Ks, the most by an LSU pitcher since April 15th of 2021. The one-two misses low to Pearson to make it two and two. That was when Landon Marceau had 12 against South Carolina. So it's been a couple seasons since a Tiger hurler has had a dozen strikeouts. Runner goes, the 2-2 pitch in the air, but foul four rows deep down the line in right. Cruz will head back to first base. How about throw Billy a curveball? Last time in their debut, a pitcher threw 12 I'm strikeouts. Yeah, Bill, but what's the last time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to text him right now. He's it's not run. as if he's got anything to do. He's just the voice of Alec Box. Cruz back at first. Now Miller going to turn and throw to keep an eye on Dylan. I know a guy to text, though. Oh, I do, too. Probably listening right now, and I imagine our phones are going to buzz here in just a few moments. Just text him. We'll see if he comes through. Two and two the count to Pearson in a pinch hitting roll, and this one misses outside. After getting behind early, Pearson now has worked it full. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning, three nothing LSU leading Western Michigan in the season open. We'll update you on that SEC scoreboard as Cruz off and running again, but the pitch is low for ball four. He just wanted a head start into second as Pearson will walk down on the base on balls. Miller gives up his third walk of the day, and now the Tigers with nobody out. Duder runners first and second, and we got the old Jedi Knight Trey Morgan coming to the plate, which no surprise. Solicits another mound visit and a pitching change going to be made by the Broncos. Pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Brady Miller's day is done. Tell you about the new Bronco pitcher when we come back. Tigers runners first and second. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. 3-0 LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans. Don't miss out on the latest John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available. From Alex Box Stadium to your own backyard, the grass is always greener behind the wheel of a John Deere. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends May 28, 2023. Elbertsons is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Elbertsons for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries and save weekly with digital coupons all in one place. With Elbertsons for you, you can earn rewards points every time you shop and redeem them for free groceries. Brand new Elbertsons for you members receive $5 off their next $25 purchase just for signing up. Download the Elbertsons app or go to Elbertsons.com to sign up. Elbertsons, fresh food, local flavors. Support your LSU Tigers with Hancock Whitney, the official bank of LSU athletics. From game day to the offseason, Hancock Whitney LSU credit and debit cards are a big win for any Tiger fan. Want to get your paws on these cards? Well, apply online or visit HancockWhitney.com slash LSU. Hancock Whitney Bank, member FDIC. All accounts subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers leading 3 0 over Western Michigan. Coach Gernon makes a call to the bullpen. Nolan Volchek, a right hander, takes over for 
Brady Miller is LSU looking with runners first and second. Nobody out. And Trey Morgan coming to the plate, Doug. Yeah, Volchek last season had 13 appearances with an 8-1 ERA. In 13 innings, he allowed 10 hits, 12 runs. They were all earned. He had 20 walks and 22 strikeouts. Dylan Cruz down at second base. Pearson on the walk at first. Delivery to Morgan, a called strike, and it's 0-1 on the first offering from Volchek. Fastball will be 86 to 90 miles an hour. Slider in the low 80s and a changeup to go with it. The 0-1 misses outside. One ball, one strike now to Trey Morgan. Morgan with a sack fly RBI in the first. Had a fly ball out to center his last time up. 1-1. One, one. Fouled back into the screen. 1-2. and two. We mentioned Morgan. Third in hitting for the Tigers last year, 324, 50 runs scored, 18 doubles, one triple, five home runs, and 54 runs driven in. Put that on top of the incredible defensive play at first. The 1 2, big swing, but again, foul this time down the left field line. Out of play, one ball, two strikes. H&E Equipment Services fans, the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. For all of your rental needs, call 877-700-RENT or visit herentals.com today. Runners first and second, nobody out. The one-two. Got a piece, fouls it back. Count remains, one ball, two strikes. Tigers looking to take advantage of an opportunity here. You got two runners on with no outs. Haven't been able to plate as many runs as I'm sure Jay Johnson would have liked at this point. But again, a golden opportunity. The one two going to catch him right in the thigh and that one's going to leave a mark as Morgan wincing in pain and now he's going to slowly stay on his feet and very slowly try to make his way to first base and you could hear. Oh, I'm hurting just oh. watching it. You could hear the thud. My, white, my, my right quad. <laughs> you could hear the thud of that pitch. And Morgan just trying to walk it off a little bit. Jay Johnson's going to go out and take a look, make sure his first baseman is okay. Here's a left hander warming for the Broncos as well. We mentioned Paul Skeen spectacular today. 12 strikeouts brought to you by. Paul Skeens and Super One Foods in this opening game. As it appears Morgan going to run a couple of times behind first base appears to be OK. That's going to load the bases by the way with nobody out. So what went from a real good opportunity now a great opportunity for LSU and it'll be Jared Jones with that chance. 0 for 2 today a fly out and a ground out. Getting the start behind the plate. I agree with you Doug when he came out to bat for the first time and you say there's your starting catcher just not what you normally see good size human being <laughs> this one misses outside from Volchek it's one and oh Volchek by the way an Illinois native a couple of years at Marshalltown Community College 6 to 200 pounds and a little bit of trouble here the 1 0 big swing by Jones but comes up empty one and one there's a lefty warming down in the Western Michigan bullpen. Tigers with their purple jerseys today, white pants, purple pinstripe, traditional LSU purple lids. Western Michigan in the gray unis. Here's the 1 1. Another big poke, but a foul into the screen behind the plate. Jones behind 1 and 2. Give you a look around the SEC. Oklahoma State defeated Missouri. 5 to 3 earlier today. Georgia and Jacksonville State are all tied up in Athens at 5 apiece in the top of the 8th. Cruz at third, bases loaded. Jones stays away and this pitch misses high and outside to even the count 2 and 2. So Cruz at third, Pearson on the walk at second, Morgan hit by pitch at first base. Tigers scored 3 runs in the first 2 innings, nothing but 0 since they lead 3 nothing. 2 2. Breaking ball misses outside, so suddenly now it's a full count to Jones. In Tuscaloosa, Alabama leads Richmond by a score of 11 to 1. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning. 
Mississippi State and Starkville. Leads Virginia Military Institute. Here's one rope to left field. Going to get over the head of Swinehart. Land on the track. Die against the wall. That'll bring in Cruz. That's going to bring in Pearson. Morgan into third. And a two RBI double off the bat of Jared Jones. The Georgia native delivers with the bases loaded. Nobody out. And the Tigers extend the lead 5 nothing. They just wrapped the bat around one. Pulled it down that left field line. Had plenty enough on it to get over Swinehart's head. And Jared Jones with his first hit as a Tiger drives in a couple runs. And we're going to get another quick change. Volchek's day is done in relief. He'll go to the left hander out of the pen. Another pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. We're here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Tigers have plated two runs. Runner at second, nobody out. It's a 5 0 Tiger lead on the LSU Sports Radio Network. It's good to be able to make a change, to never feel stuck. That's why at Cox, we're making a change too. Now, Cox Internet plans are flexible, so you can choose to just go with Internet, add TV tomorrow, or home automation down the line. It's easier than ever to get just what you want and nothing you don't. Flexible plans from Cox. Change anytime. No commitments, no penalties. See for yourself at cox.com slash internet. Additional services can be added at then current regular rates. All services subject to residential customer service agreement and acceptable use policy. Restrictions apply. Southern Air Heating and Cooling is proud to be an official sponsor of LSU Athletics. Their team of AC professionals have been serving the comfort needs of the people of Louisiana for over 25 years. Much like the fans of the Tigers, our commitment to Tiger Athletics and providing great service remains as strong as ever. Southern Air Heating and Cooling. Go Tigers! Hey, Tiger fans, don't miss out on the latest John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available from Alex. Alondra, what inning was that where there wasn't a bumper? The grass is always I want to say the bottom of the fifth. Of okay. Yeah, bottom of the fifth. Thank you. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends May 28, 2023. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Go to the top of the seventh inning here on this Friday afternoon, headed towards the evening hours, opening day at Alec Box Stadium. Always a great day. Start of LSU baseball. Nation's unanimous number one team in the land. Again, you can find 10 or 11 teams depending on the number of polls you subscribe to that are ranked in the top 25 preseason that hail from the Southeastern Conference. Not a huge surprise. Runners second and third with nobody out. The Tigers trying to strike big here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Already two runs in as Brady Neal takes the first pitch from new pitcher Joe Shapiro. The left-hander takes over for the Broncos. The 0-1 working quickly. Sails outside. One and one now to Neal who, by the way, on the day is one for one, had a walk in the fourth, and his debut, just a triple to center field. Runners take their lead, second and third. Breaking ball doesn't break enough, misses inside. Now two and one to Neal. Joe Shapiro had 15 appearances last year for the Broncos, seven starts. He had a 10.9 ERA, he was two and six on the year. Two one pitch. High in the air to right field, giving chase. Nevar gets to the track, now steps up a little bit as the wind brings it in. He'll make the grab in right field. Both runners will tag. Trey Morgan steps on home plate, and it's 6-0 LSU. And Neal with a sack fly RBI extends the lead for LSU. And scooting on into third will be Jared Jones. Still just one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, any other day without the win, that ball's five or six rows up deep in the diamond deck. Brady Neal just missed it, but gets the job done. And the Tigers have a runner at third with one out. Looks like Christian Little's starting to get loose down in the LSU bullpen. Another guy I'm excited to watch get out there on the mound. Transfer from Vanderbilt. Here's Jordan Thompson. He's 0 for 2 today. 
Looking to get started here in 2023. That first pitch from Shapiro misses low and inside 1 and 0. Ty Floyd originally was up throwing. Again, this inning being extended a little bit by the LSU offense. Now, as Doug says, little throwing. As Skeens, a spectacular debut for LSU with 12 strikeouts today and really just so smooth doing it. I mean, he had the same tempo from his first pitch to his last pitch, and I would love to track how many 97 mile an hour fastballs he threw today consistently. And he hit 98, he was at 96. This one misses low and inside to Thompson, two and one. You know, and of all the things I've heard that's impressive about Paul Skeens in the preseason, I'll let this pitch go. Two one to Thompson. Just missed the inside corner at the belt, three and one. Talking to Coach Johnson last week, Chris, he said that Paul Skeens is already the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah. He's the guy that both sides look up to, well respected, and that says a lot coming from outside the program. Missing outside to Thompson, ball four, and so Sapiro will offer up his first walk. Runners on the corners now with one out. Yeah, Jay told me today, I asked him, you know, last year you were, again, trying to win as many games as possible, get to the postseason, make a run. But all the while, you're building the foundation of your program in year number one. I said, have you seen the results of one year and that layer? And the first guy he brought up, he said, well, Dylan Cruz has been a natural born leader, so he's been there. First pitch to Napolt, the second baseman, tried to bunt it, bunts it foul, and it's 0-1. He said, but right after that, was Paul Skeens. He said he arrived on campus just a natural leader. No surprise coming from the Air Force Academy. Yeah. They tend to train that. Um, and he just said, as you said, both sides, offense, defense, the pitching staff, heard Ty Floyd on the Talking with Tiger segment mm-hmm. today. And Ty's been around a while. And he said he looks up to Skeens, and he is a leader in that, that pitching department. Here's another bunt attempt. Can't get it on there, and it's a strike. Make it 0-2 as that time they were trying to Get old Jones down the line at third, but Napolt couldn't get the bat on it. So 0-2 with one out, runners on the corners. Again, you've got Jones at third. Thompson with the walk at first base. Still just one away, and Tigers have played at three in this frame. They lead 6-0. Runner goes from first to second. Breaking ball misses low. There'll be no throw. Runners now second and third. Well, Napolt missed two bunts. And Jay Johnson decides... Just to take second anyway, not even a throw down there with Thompson. A good time to do it now. One, two. Get Towards out. right center field. Morrison, the center fielder, giving chase. The right fielder, Nevar, coming over. He'll make the grab, but Jones will tag up from third, come in to score. Another sack fly RBI, this time off the bat of Napole. And it's 7 nothing Tigers, and into third base goes Thompson. So with two down, Tigers still threatening. After three runs in the first two innings, Four plated here in the bottom of the sixth. And already in this game, I hate to beat a dead horse, but we've seen a couple of hit and run attempts. As you said, unable to get the bunt down, they decided just steal second base. Already seeing a more aggressive LSU offense here in game number one. First delivery, missing inside to Paxton Kling. Kling atop the order today, getting the start. Hit by a pitch, came around to score the first run of the game in the first, fly out to center in the second, strikeout victim last time in the sixth inning. The strike to make it one and one to cling. Yeah, three sack flies in the game so far for the Tigers. The one one. Bouncing ground ball foul down the third base line. Kling falls behind one and two. And it was interesting all last year, you know, doing the Jay Johnson show at TJ Ribs. We would either get a call or a tweet. Somebody would ask about, have you thought about the hit and run? Have you thought about putting runners in motion? Have you thought about squeeze plays? And Jay Johnson said, when it's there, I want to score any way possible. It's just a matter if it's the right time and the right personnel at the plate. Here's another foul ball down the third baseline. Make it one and two. And trust me, Jay Johnson thought about it all. I think we all did last year. So kind clean. of a ho-hum seven runs so far. Not a whole lot of extra base hits. Nope. One, two. This one gets There's by the hole. catcher, Budig, and that will allow a run to score. Thompson in to home plate. Now a miscue by Shapiro on the mound makes it 8 nothing LSU. Well, the, the biggest difference. And there's this, another example, Doug. 
you know, wild pitch gives you a run. You haven't had the explosive hits, yeah. but Jay will take them. Exactly. They still count. Brady Miller, through his four innings of work, only had one walk, but there's been three walks and a hit by pitch in this inning alone. 2-2 two -two to cling with the bases empty. Drops in low for ball three, and that'll fill the count. Yeah, I don't expect Jay Johnson in the 10th inning show to apologize for how they got the runs thus far. Oh, no. <laughs> the 3-2 uh -oh. hit high in the air, left field way. This one's going to land in the seat. Sounded good, looked good off the bat, but it's foul down the left field line. Try to catch some other games up around the SEC. I don't know if I mentioned Alabama leading Richmond 11-1 in Tuscaloosa. They're in the bottom of the fifth. With two outs, the payoff delivery. Swing and a miss. And Shapiro able to get clean swinging for out number three. But the Tigers do some damage. Five runs, just one hit. They leave nobody on. We head now to the seventh inning. LSU leading Western Michigan. Eight nil on the LSU Sports Radio Network. When it comes to investing in your home's comfort, it's never just one thing. You want to make sure you get an air conditioned system that's reliable, affordable, energy efficient, backed by a strong warranty, and is installed by a dealer you can trust. That's why people who insist on the best choose Train. Plus, right now, Train is offering special financing. So what's not to love? Visit TrainSouth.com to find a local train dealer today. It's hard to stop a train. Subject to credit approval. Ask for details. Fall can only mean one thing in Baton Rouge, LSU football season. From tailgating to the final quarter, the Tigers are in it to win it. And when the home game is over, there's plenty to discover in the Red Stick. Whether you're visiting Mike the Tiger for the first time or sightseeing on the mighty Mississippi River, our city is ready to welcome you for a matchup to remember. So grab your tickets, come on down for kickoff, then find more to explore at visitbatonrouge.com. You want a carnival groove with a rhyme on top for 2023? We're gonna let a new beat drop. Yum, drop. Yum, yum, yum. That's what I'm talking about. Master and money. LA Lottery in the house. Lottery search shops for carnival season. Play Mambo Mambo, win up to $2,000. And masquerade money, you can win up to $12,000. So many ways to win, I'm gonna play them again. You gotta be 21 to purchase. The powerhouse of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We reached the top of the seventh inning here on opening day. LSU plating five runs there in the bottom of the sixth inning to open this up a little bit. They lead 8-0 now over Western Michigan. Tigers scored two in the bottom of the first, added one more in the bottom of the second. Game settled down. Both teams scoreless. Until the bottom of the sixth inning, LSU able to get men aboard early. A couple of sack fly RBIs, a wild pitch, and they put five runs up. And now we'll see the pitcher taking over for Paul Skeens. To follow him will be Christian Little, another transfer, this time out of Vanderbilt. Imposing figure, to say the least, Yeah. as he takes over for the Tigers here in the top of the seventh. By the way, he'll face Nevar, Budig, and Swinehart. That's the five, six, and seven hitters for the Broncos. Got some defensive changes. Malazzo now in behind the dish. Nipple goes over to third base. Dugas is now out at second base. Here's the first pitch from Little, called strike. 93 mile an hour fastball, and it's 0 1. Josh Pearson moves into left field, and now Braden Jobert is out in right field. I think that actually happened last inning. Here's a little slow bouncer right of the mound. Little gets off the mound quickly. Underhand throw to Morgan in time for out number one. That will retire Nevar. And now it's 0 for 3 on the day. There we go. It's a good, quick, easy out for Christian Little. Lots of debuts in this ball game. Christian Little wearing number 99, by the way. Just goes with that intimidating, what would you say, 6'4", 240? 225. I need to be there when they do that. I'm not buying it. Swing and a miss. First offering to Budig, the... Broncos catcher, and it's 0-1. Great to see, by the way, Alex Malazzo behind the plate. Yeah. Tough year last year with injury. Beautiful breaking ball in for a strike, and little ahead 0-2 quickly. Another guy likes to get it and go back at it. Already delivering the third pitch. 
0-2, went around, swing and a miss, and Little records his first strikeout in relief. Another strikeout brought to you by Super One Foods. Great quality at super low prices. While we have a moment, let's pause. Ten seconds, station identification. Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. And streaming on the LSU Sports mobile app. Two down, Swinehart, the left fielder. Now to face Little. First pitch, fastball down and away. Makes it 1-0. Swinehart today 0 for 2. Struck out by Skeens. And a ground out in the fourth inning. This one across the plate for a strike. Evens it up. One ball, one strike. Little. 1-1. Dials that one back. Swing and a miss. Gets ahead one and two. Very similar to Skeens. Maybe a tad bit faster. Little's delivery. He's ready to go. He gets it immediately and is back on the rubber. Two outs. Chopping ground ball to third, but it's foul left of the bag. Nice fielding job by Nepal. But the third base umpire on it quickly. It still remains one and two. TJ Ribs, legendary Louisiana barbecue, home of the Jay Johnson Show, beginning in late March, the official barbecue restaurant of LSU Athletics. Every game, all the time, to go tailgate packages and event catering. Located on Acadian Thruway in Segan Lane, visit them online at tjribs.com. Christian Little, his debut. On the mound for the Tigers in relief. The one-two. Swing and a miss. Malazzo will pick it up, make the tag, but Little records two strikeouts here in the top of the seventh inning. Quick work of the Broncos. Time for the first seventh inning stretch of the season. Tigers with eight runs on five hits. They lead 8 nothing. They come to the plate after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. LSU Online works toward one goal, providing high-quality online learning options coupled with world-class customer service. Their courses are online by design, meaning you can expect an immersive virtual learning experience from the same faculty that teach the on-campus programs. And when you graduate, you earn the same LSU diploma that our on-campus Tigers receive. There's no difference. Learn more at online.lsu.edu. Go Tigers! Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Bottom of the seventh inning, your Tigers up 8-0 over Western Michigan here on this blustery cold day. February 17th as Braden Jobear to lead it off. Joe Shapiro remains in relief, the left-hander for the Broncos. First delivery to Braden misses outside. Here's the 1-0. He'll take that one, and it's a called strike. One ball, one strike. Joe Bayer today, 0 for 3. Out on strikes. Got a strike added to his count for a delay back in the first inning. Flight out to center in the third. This pitch off speed from Shapiro. Drops in at the ankles inside. 2-1. and one. Chris, I know our listeners are dying to hear these scores around the SEC. I'm going to get them in this inning, I promise. Knock it out. The 2-1. Going to be a base hit. Roped into right center field. Joe Bear makes the wide turn at first, but he'll put on the brakes as the throw comes in from Morrison. And a leadoff single for Joe Bear, his first hit of the season. Solid poke into right center. Yeah. That ball was two feet off the ground for about 230 feet. Can't hit it much harder than that. Good to see Joby come away with one there. 
Mississippi State now leads Virginia Military Institute 6-2 in the top of the sixth inning in Starkville. Elon taking it to Kentucky, 2-0 to they lead in the top of the eighth. In the bottom of the sixth, South Carolina all over, who is that, UML. Oh, UMass Lowell, 16-2. Vanderbilt leads TCU 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Ole Miss leads Delaware 7 to nothing. They're in the bottom of the third in Oxford. And finally, Auburn trails Indiana 2-1 to one on the Plains in the bottom of the third. Nobody out here. Joe Barrett first on the single to right center. And Dylan Cruz at the plate. Reach base all three times. He's 2-2 two for two with a couple of base hits. Came around to score in the first. Got a walk back in the sixth. Came around to score as part of that five-run inning. Here's a strike to Dylan. Make it 2-1. and one. That one at the knees. And can tell LSU fans they were not happy with that call. Cruz got the baby blue cleats on. You get the story on those bad boys. There's a throw over to keep an eye on Joe Bear from Shapiro at first base. Dudley DeBosier stands up for the purple and gold. They fight for Tiger fans all across Louisiana. Dudley DeBosier proud to be an official partner of LSU Athletics. 2-1 to Dillon. Misses too far inside. Three balls, one strike. Dylan Cruz, possibly the top pick in the upcoming draft. A couple of candidates across the SEC. Dolander at Tennessee comes to mind. Good count here. Here's the 3 1. Oh. Check swing and a foul ball. The first base way. It's moves the count three and two. You said it when he arrived here on campus the first time we saw Dylan Cruz play. You said, hey, we're all blessed that he is here at LSU. You don't get these opportunities no. to see these type of players very often at this level. Here's the payoff pitch. Oh, oh call come strike on three on the outside corner. Dylan a little surprised. Not particularly happy with that call. He's down on strikes, and that's out number one here at the bottom of the seventh inning. You don't punch Dylan Cruz out on that pitch. <laughs> Come on, man. Somebody get a memo down there to Eddie. That was a little too far outside. Let's put it this way. Skeens threw that pitch a couple times, and it wasn't called a strike. There you go. Might be a little more chilly right now, though. Josh Pearson batting for the second time today. Came in as a pinch hitter for Jack Merrifield, who had to come into the game due to the injury to Tommy White in the first inning after he delivered an RBI single. Sure, Jay Johnson on the 10th inning show will update us on the status on Tommy Tanks as this one missing to Pearson. Pearson today got a walk in the sixth inning. Also came around to score a run for the Tigers. Joe Bear a lead off of first. The pitch to Josh inside. Move the count 2 and 0. Oh. Fans remember when the Tigers win, you win. Just enter promo code LSU50 the day after an LSU baseball victory, and you'll receive 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Pearson swats this one in the air to left field. Tough play. Swinehart having to come near the line, fighting against the wind, but able to get a glove on it for out number two. Joe Bear will stay put at first base, and we'll see Trey Morgan. Morgan today. 0 oh for 1. Sack fly RBI earlier back in the second inning. Didn't get a lot of time to talk about Christian Little. He worked so fast there no. at the top of the seventh, but impressive nonetheless. I mean, he was only out there for about 45 seconds, but <laughs> had a great changeup, a good looking breaking ball, and his fastball got up to 94 miles an hour. Pitch to Morgan. Missing low and inside from Shapiro. Make it one ball and no strikes. Again, Morgan with that sack fly RBI in the first. Fly ball out to center in the fourth and was hit by a pitch and scored himself in the sixth. Went after this one outside. And they'll appeal down. And Trey thought he held back. Third base umpire did not agree, and that's Alex Ziegler. So it's one and one now to Trey. See a couple things this inning you don't see often. That's Trey Morgan on a check swing and Dylan Cruz taking strike three. The 1 1. Sharp hit. Watch out. Foul over there. ball down the line. Coach Wanaka having to dance out of the way there. First base coach for the Tigers, who, of course, part of the staff last year. Coach Jay Johnson. When you have success, coaches under your tutelage have a chance to run their own shop. That's what happened at the end of last year's Morgan. 
Light swing pops it up shallow left field. Swinehart will come in. He will have it for out number three. So the Tigers quiet here in the bottom of the seventh. No runs, one hit. They leave one man on. We head to the top of the eighth. It's 8 nothing LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Southern Air Heating and Cooling is proud to be an official sponsor of LSU Athletics. Their team of AC professionals have been serving the comfort needs of the people of Louisiana for over 25 years. Much like the fans of the Tigers, our commitment to Tiger Athletics and providing great service remains as strong as ever. Southern Air Heating and Cooling. Go Tigers! If you want to see the world's largest chest of drawers, you go to High Point, North Carolina. Yeah, that's a big chest. If you want to stand under the skirt of the giant 15.4-ton statue of Marilyn Monroe, you go to Palm Springs, California. Yeah, that is a big chest. And if you want to discover the world's biggest, bestest pizza, you go to Fat Boy's Pizza. 30 inches of premium toppings, cheesy awesomeness, and crust perfection awaits. That's a big pizza. Size matters at Fat Boy's Pizza. <laughs> nice. More to love. Okay. It's good to be able to make a change, to never feel stuck. That's why at Cox, we're making a change, too. Now Cox Internet plans are flexible, so you can choose to just go with Internet, add TV tomorrow, or home automation down the line. It's easier than ever to get just what you want and nothing you don't. Flexible plans from Cox. Change any time. No commitments, no penalties. See for yourself at cox.com slash internet. Additional services can be added at then current regular rates. All services subject to residential customer service agreement and acceptable use policy. Restrictions apply. LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Game one of this three-game series here on this Friday afternoon. Tomorrow, 1.30 first pitch, Broncos and Tigers. Then on Sunday, they'll conclude the weekend with a 12.30 first pitch. Hope you'll join us all weekend long, all season long. Another year of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our producer, Alondra Villarreal, Doug Thompson, Chris Blair here in the booth. Glad to have you on board as the Broncos come to the plate. Bobby Deering will lead it off. Deering, a little bit of success for the Broncos offensively. Had a double to lead things off in the third, but was left stranded. Struck out last time as Little drops one off the table to even the count one and one on a swing and a miss. Again, recapping the defense. It's changed a little bit since the start of the game. A 1-1. Another swing and miss by Deering. It's one and two. Napolt started the game at second. He's now at third base. Thompson remains at short. Dugas checks in at second base. Morgan at first. The one two. A little slow bouncer first base side, but foul. Keeps it one and two. Braden Joe Bear started the game in left. He now is in right field. Josh Pearson came in. He is in left. And of course, Dylan Cruz remains in center field. Tommy White injured his hand early in the game. First inning. One two check swing lifted foul territory coming over to Polt sliding in foul territory makes the grab. Talked about his speed showed it there. Great concentration records the first out of the inning. Yeah just a little check swing there in the foul territory and Napolt, as you mentioned showed off the wheels to make the sliding grab came up with a pop throw around the horn too. I like that. And that's one out for Christian Little. Tigers pitchers tonight have 14 strikeouts and have only allowed three hits. Harity now comes to the plate. Bats in the nine spot. He's 0 for 2 today. But again, we hope to get word on at least the initial diagnosis on Tommy White with Jay Johnson in the 10th inning show. Of course, the award winning Fighting Tiger 10th inning show. Have the full game stats, highlights. The 1 1 way out in front of this one is Harity. Little gets ahead 1 and 2. Bill Franquez will be down in the team room inside the clubhouse with Jay Johnson following each home game. The 1 2, swing and a miss. Little punches out yet another, his third strikeout on the day. Two gone here in the top of the eighth inning. It's 15 now. For. Little and Skeens. Skeens tonight's 12 strikeouts, the most by an LSU pitcher and a season opener since Scott Schultz did it back in 1995. He had 12 against Lamar in the old Winn-Dixie showdown in the Superdome. 
First pitch, bouncing ball to third again. Foul outside the lines as Napolt came up to field. And it's 0 and 1 to Morrison atop the order, who's 1 for 3, had a base hit. For the Broncos back in the third inning, strikeout victim last time in the fifth to Skeens. Scott Schultz, pretty good company to join <laughs> in your LSU debut. He could spin it. Little ready to fire the 0 1. Fastball outside. One ball and one strike. One one ground ball towards short Thompson scoops it up long throw to first and he's able to get it to Morgan who digs it out for out number three almost as if Thompson couldn't decide that he need to backhand yeah. or forehand Got caught it, between there but he still made the play and again made it look easy and the Tigers retired the Broncos quickly here in the top of the eighth inning no runs no hits nobody on base they've held the Broncos to just three runs thus far Tigers up eight nothing. Back after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Put a frog in boiling water and let it jump right out. But put a frog in cool water and slowly heat it up, that frog will boil. As veterans, we tell ourselves the lie that we can handle anything. We let the water boil. You are not a frog. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. That's va.gov reach. Brought to you by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and the Ad Council. He's going to the track, the wall, see ya! Tiger fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Jelly Jelly adjective Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services AdoptUSKids and the Ad Council LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Jared Jones set to lead things off for the Tigers here in the bottom of the eighth. They lead 8-0 over Western Michigan in the season opener here. It'll be Jones, Dugas, and Thompson. Six, seven, and eight hitters for Coach Jay Johnson as we not quite getting to sunset, but making our way there. 1 0 to Jones. Big shot, but foul into the seats left field. Out of play. Make it one ball and one strike. Jones today, one for three. Batting, as I mentioned, in the sixth spot. Flight out to center in the first. Ground out to the shortstop in the fourth. And then a double with two RBI. Not bad for his first day in the purple and gold back in the sixth inning. 1 1 the count. Pitch to Jones. Stays back. They appeal to first. Did not go. Two and one the count. Now more action in the bullpen for LSU. Double barrel action yeah. indeed. Got a lot of new names these days. Got to get some numbers. Shapiro just missed with a breaking ball. Tried to paint that corner but missed. According to Eddie Newsom, it's three and one now to Jones. A couple of righties down there. Will Helmers is one of them. I remember that name. Inside missing for ball four from Shapiro. So a leadoff walk gets the Tigers a man aboard here in the top or rather bottom of the eighth inning. And then how about Micah Bucknum? 6'2 freshman. Out of British Columbia. Another guy not scared of some cold weather. No, spring like day. Yeah, it's probably got no sleeves on down there. Gavin Dugas steps to the plate with the runner on. Nobody out. Shapiro delivers a first pitch strike. It's 0-1. Dugas batting for the first time today, as we mentioned. Entered the game at second base. 
The 0 1. Hammered base hit into right, or rather left field. Coming up with it. But runners safe first and second as that one hit right to Swinehart. Solid hit yeah, off the bat smack. of Dugas. Good to see him feeling 100% as well. We've seen him have some really big moments in his time here at LSU, and he can be a big help with another name in this very talented roster. Time call. There's going to be a visit on the mound between Budig, the catcher, and Shapiro, the pitcher. Jordan Thompson will await to swing away. Also a right-hander throwing down in the Broncos bullpen as well. Eight runs, seven hits for LSU today. Again, the Broncos with, really they scattered three hits, but they were mostly early in this game. And again, we can't say it enough. Skeens with 12 strikeouts. Little comes in, he has three and his short amount of time in relief, just dominant from the Tiger pitchers so far today. Runners first and second with nobody out. Pitch to Thompson. And Shapiro can't find it outside. It's 1-0. I'd like to see JT run into one here. 1-0 one -oh delivery. Base it up the middle. Jones going to be waved in from third. Coming up throwing is Morrison. He's going to bring it to third as they try to get oh. the runner, and they say they do. Dugas. Trying to get to third will be called out on the throw from Morrison from center field. And Dugas arguing his point. He thought he beat the throw and beat the tag. Maybe a little video replay. I think Coach Johnson is going to come out and talk to the home plate umpire. I guess we have video replays available in this game, huh? Whew. Wind just came through there pretty hard. <laughs> well, Dugas now makes his way to the dugout. Jay Johnson and home plate umpire Eddie Newsom have a conversation. Yeah, they're going to review it. And they are going to take a look. So, Jay Johnson, as Dugas was emphatic that he beat the throw and the tag, he didn't even move off the third base bag until coach said, well, come in for a second. Let me go talk to the umpires. Now Dugas will, again, they want him out there on the third base bag. It, it's very symbolic. If you're not on the bag, you're you're arguing for. So Gavin will go back and stand there. Two of the umpires now will go to the video room, yeah. and it will go under review. Our first official review of the season, brought to you by Acme Oyster House, and uh, still waiting to get a review here to take a look at it. I, you know, in, in real time, Doug, it looked bang bang. The throw was a one hopper to the third baseman Doyle. It matters whether or not two guys was able to get his foot on the bag before the tag was applied, but we've yet to see a replay. So. All we can go on is real time, and I would just say it's very close. Well, regardless, Thompson gets the eighth hit of the game. It's nine to nothing now, regardless of the outcome over at third base. But I kind of thought he was safe, too. Here's the replay. First time we see it, and he's safe. Yeah, it looked like his right foot was on the bag as Doyle swung around to try to make the tag, and he never got his foot off the bag. Doyle, wise move, kept the glove on him in case Dugas' momentum carried him off the bag, but he, he never left the bag. So, hey, this may be overturned. We only saw that angle from the right field cam shooting in at third base, but. Well, we rarely miss calls. Up yeah, there, I mean, normally we are We've very We've got the bird's accurate. eye view, and we know when it's a ball or a strike every time. <laughs> so we wait. Man, it's cold. I really don't want the game to end because I don't want to walk down to my car. <laughs> the sun's going to be gone by then, probably. I was imagining this week, again, as the weather forecast started to say it would be rather chilly on Friday, maybe very cold at night. Also, that it's Mardi Gras weekend. That's not going to stop anybody no. from going to the parades. The cold weather will not matter. There's, there's ways to keep yourself warm, obviously, for parades. Um, but I always think about the LSU fan and the – South Louisiana folks who, I mean, this weekend comes up. Mardi Gras is going to fluctuate year to year, but it's opening weekend and you've got all your Mardi Gras activities. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of decisions to be made this year. Listen, you're talking to a bunch of people that wake up at 3.30 a.m. to get in a little pontoon boat and drive through the water to go get in the marsh to shoot birds. They're not worried about this weather. 
No, it's, I mean, I mean, it's I mean, not the even decision, wet. The it's deci- just windy and cold, you yeah. know. No, I, I don't know. I don't doubt that at all. The decisions are: can you miss Mardi Gras activities for LSU baseball? Ooh. Do you miss LSU baseball for Mardi Gras activities? That's no. I, I know for a fact, cold weather doesn't affect the people of Louisiana. Well, if you can't, I mean, if I, you, not if everybody you can't be here. I have There's a, a few people I know that it bothers. Oh, it bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't be here in person, the good news is with the LSU Sports mobile app, yeah, you can have it both ways. You can actually go to a parade, get the beads and the doubloons and all the good stuff, and still listen to the baseball games in your AirPod. Shameless plug. Great job, Doug. Yeah. Well, this is quite a review here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's our experience so is that when it takes longer – it must be close to being overturned. Now, again, the ruling on the field was Dugas was tagged out at third, but this is going quite a ways. Again, the SEC loves to have these within 90 seconds. They're going to miss this one. But he is. Oh, come on. Wow. They still got it wrong? How is that even possible? Wow. So, after review, the ruling on the field stands, and that will be the first out of the inning. It's not. That's... And LSU will have Thompson at first, but as Doug mentioned, he was able to drive in a run. With that base hit to center field, so it is nine oh, nothing now LSU. We're do a pitch and change. So it looks like we will make a change once again for the Broncos. They will bring in their third relief pitcher of the day with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. LSU leading nine nothing. We'll tell you about the new Western Michigan pitcher when we return on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans! Don't miss out on the latest John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available. From Alex Box Stadium to your own backyard, the grass is always greener behind the wheel of a John Deere. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends May 28, 2023. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At h and Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. h and Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rentals, sales, parts, and service. You want a carnival groove with a rhyme on top for 2023? We're gonna let a new beat drop. Mm-hmm. drop. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Master Rig Money. L.A. Lottery in the house. Lottery shirt shops for carnival season. Play Mambo Mambo, win up to $2,000. And Master Rig Money, you can win up to $12,000. So many ways to win, I'm gonna play them again. You gotta be 21 to purchase. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Pitch and change by the Broncos here with one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Your Tigers leading 9-0. It'll be D.J. Thompson taking over for Western Michigan. D.J. Thompson's a freshman right-hander. 5'11", 185 pounds out of Alma, Michigan, making his debut here for the Broncos. Nine runs, eight hits for the Tigers, no runs on three hits for Western Michigan. Going to have a pinch hitter for the Tigers here, up 9 nothing. We'll see Ethan Fry, Rose Pine, Louisiana, freshman, 6'5", 215 pounds, right-handed hitter. A lot of big human beings in that LSU dugout this year. (laughs) I was about to say the same thing. (laughs) Runner at first and the delivery. Missing low and inside. And that'll make it one ball, no strikes. One of a great group of catchers, Jay Johnson, brought into the program. There's a called strike to Fry to make it one ball and one strike. Ranked the number one catcher, number two overall player in the state of Louisiana by perfect game. Also played quarterback. The 
Rose Pine High football team as this one gets away from Budig all the way to the backstop. Easily allows Thompson to sprint on into second base, so the Tigers with a runner in scoring position with just one out. You don't see that much a quarterback who plays catcher in baseball. Yeah, I know. Well, again, when you take a look at Jared Jones, you take a look at Ethan Fry. If you'd have said to me what position you think these guys play, I, I don't know that catcher would have been the first one out of my mouth. Thompson now will take a leadoff second. DJ Thompson, the pitcher, will fire to the plate. High chopper over the mound towards second base. Oh. Going to be mishandled by both Harity and Allen. The second baseman and shortstop, nobody could decide to get it. Thompson keeps rolling on in to score. It's 10-0 LSU. And I'm not sure anybody said, mine, mine, mine. Allen was going to his left. Harity came across the second base bag. Not sure either really extended their glove, maybe thinking the other was going to snag it. But nonetheless, LSU will... Add another run to the board. Yeah, it was, it was really bad communication. High chopper up the middle. Second baseman came across the bag. Looked like he was going to sell out, make the back cam. The last minute pulled his glove up, which caught the shortstop completely off guard. The ball trickled out in the center field. So another run in with just one out. And we'll see Alex Malazzo. I mentioned it was great to see him crouch behind the plate. Great to see him standing from the right side of the plate with a bat in his hand. Fry with a leadoff first. The pitch from DJ Thomas. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Malazzo falls behind in the count. Another debut base hit. An RBI by Fry. Pitch outside to Malazzo. Make it one ball, two strikes. Fan Super One Foods, they've got super low prices on all your game day favorites for this upcoming baseball season. Up your grocery game. Score big. Super One Foods, Malazzo with a ground ball to short. Scooped up by Allen. He'll get it to Harity, the relay to first in time. And the Broncos able to stop the bleeding here after just two runs put up by LSU on the double play. But two runs, three hits, nobody left on. We head to the top of the ninth here on opening day. And LSU leading 10-0 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Oh, man, I'm glad you're here. Sit down and visit with me, Mom. I'm making it all ready for supper with my family tonight. I can't wait to hug my grandbabies and pass a good time over some good food. Mmm. -hmm. Ooh, I better start my rice. You know, it seems like all the best meals start by cooking some rice. Cajun country rice, of course. It's what you got to have when you're cooking with love. I pick it up down the street at the grocery store, and I can even buy it online at CajunCountryRice.com. Y'all stay and eat. There's plenty, yeah. Hi, I'm Kevin Falk, LSU Hall of Famer. My years at LSU were amazing. I've always loved celebrating with my teammates, especially when someone was serving up some delicious Manda salsa. For a lot of Tiger fans, it's just not game day without Manda in the mix. Serving top quality sauces in original season is Manda's strong side, but it's not Manda's flavor that's always got me running back for more. You get it? Running back for more. After 75 years, the flavor still says it all. Manda Fine Meats, the official smoke sauce of LSU Athletics. Hey, Tiger fans, 12 and younger, don't miss your chance to be a part of Mike's Kids Club. Presented by Shell, the exclusive Kids Club of LSU Athletics. Join Mike's Kids Club for only $25. Get the official Mike's Kids Club t-shirt, free admission to select LSU athletic events, and much, much more. To learn about upcoming events and to join, please visit LSUMKC.com. The Mike's Kids Club, presented by Shell. LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Moving along on this Friday, we head to the top of the ninth inning. Broncos here in game one. Last chance. In the immortal words of Donna Summer, 10-0. LSU leads. Fans, our Lady of the Lake, proud to be the championship health partner of LSU. Together, our Lady of the Lake and LSU. Champions for Louisiana. Together we roar. Learn more at OLOLRMC.com slash LSU. New pitcher on the mound. This will be losing track third of the day. Just yeah. the third of the day That's for it. LSU. It's Micah Bucknum, six foot two, 195 pounds, out of Abbotsford, British Columbia. Actually born in New Zealand. 
played on the Canadian Junior National Team, actually was selected in the 16th round of the 2021 draft by the Toronto Blue, Dra Blue Jays. He was ranked nationally as the 72nd right-handed pitcher by perfect game. So Bucknam will make his debut. Right-hander looks in. Jimmy Allen, number two in the lineup for the Broncos. Awaits in the first pitch. Fastball misses just a bit outside, and it's 1-0. and oh. Allen today 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts and a ground out. The right-hander deals. Again, missing outside with a heater, 2-0. Couple 92 mile an hour fastballs there from the freshman. Two zero delivery. Drops in low. Now three balls, on, no blue. strikes. It's cold out here. Gavin Gedry checks in at second base defensively for LSU. Gavin Dugas moving over to third base from second. There's a strike to make it three and one. Gidry, the freshman out of Lake Charles, Barb High School product. Josh Stevenson's actually out in center field as well. Three one, high and tight, misses ball four. So Buckingham offers up a walk to start the top of the ninth inning. Allen will trot his way down there, and Doyle will come to the plate. 0 for two, the senior on the day. Did earn a walk in the first. Two strikeouts. One in the third, caught looking in the sixth inning. Bucknam delivers. There's a strike at the letters, 0 and 1. Off speed from the right hander. Don't forget, following the action on the diamond, the Fighting Tiger 10th inning show will come your way. The 0 1. Slap back foul into the screen. And Buckingham gets ahead on this hitter, 0 and 2. Of course, you'll hear from Jay Johnson, but don't miss those SEC scores with Doug Thompson there in the 10th Can't inning wait. show. Can't wait. Ready for it. Allen, a short leadoff first. Buckingham from the stretch and slap foul down the third baseline. Still remains, no balls, two strikes. Sun trying to find its home in the western sky. I mean, you can see the sun. And you know it's up there. It's just you just can't really feel the sun today. That's the thing. The 0-2. A little too far outside. One and two. You know, maybe if you were sitting on top of the intimidator right now. I think it might be, you know, 51 up there, maybe. It's it's still <laughs> cold. I mean, it's cold. The one-two pitch. Late coming around, just got a there piece, go. foul tip, and he is done. Held on to by Malazzo, and Bucknam records a strikeout. About so one down. Tonight for the Tigers. Yeah, one down, two to go for LSU here on opening day. Cade Sullivan stands in, he's 0 for 3. Also a couple of strikeouts, had a fly ball out to left back in the first. Buckingham checks the runner at first, now delivers. Oh. Three bouncer to short. Thompson throws to second. Relay to first in time, and that'll do it. Paint this one purple and gold on the opening day of 2023. Tigers get the win. 10-0 the final. As the middle infield gets it done to finish this game out, the Tigers 10 runs, nine hits. Broncos held scoreless on just three hits today, and the Tigers Take their first step. They're 1 and 0 on the early season. The Broncos fall to 0 and 1. Stay with us. Coming up, we crank up. The Fighting Tiger 10th inning show as LSU gets the win in game one of this series, game one of the season. 10 0 to final over Western Michigan on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Elbertsons is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Elbertsons for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries and save weekly with digital coupons all